Good evening, Pokemon fans all over the world. Welcome to another round two race of the Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee Any Percent No Major Skips Tournament. I'm Leggy Starscream, and joining me in the booth here today is Gavin and BD. How you doing? I'm doing great. I'm excited for this race today. Uh, I know both runners have been uh, preparing and uh, are well, you know, coming in with a lot of momentum. And uh, yeah, I'm just excited for a good time. Excited to see what happens. Yeah, unfortunately, the third racer for this race uh, decided to uh, drop beforehand. Totally understandable. Things get in the way. Uh, but between these two runners, uh, we do have a little bit of variance. Um, Spider definitely has a much stronger PB and tournament time coming into this. But as we've seen throughout this entire round, that does not guarantee anything in this game. So do not count Pengi out by any stretch of the imagination. Um, especially if those Staryu stats flip. Yeah, the star you can definitely make or break uh, the runs, as we've seen in some of these uh, races so far, especially in the second round. And uh, yeah, we'll both be seeing uh, we'll be seeing two EV runs today, so uh, things should be pretty similar from the start. Um, but yeah, uh, we'll see what the natures turn out to be, see if that affects the time. Um, both of these runners have been uh, doing some different activities since their... Uh, last round races. I know Pengi has been doing some NAIC stuff. I believe he's uh, a VGC player. And meanwhile, Spider has been grinding kicked by Koga in his, in his free time. Um, so we will see if uh, that impacts him. It didn't seem to during his D-Rest run when he PB'd uh, this week, but uh, oh, and there we are. We are yeah. off to the races. Um, so yeah. Now that we're done getting stared at by our tiny, adorable friend, we've got, you know, about four minutes to just vibe here and chill until we get our starter and we get the ability to take our first look at our starter stats if our runners so choose. Otherwise, they can hold off until the end of the forest, defeat the first trader with the Caterpie there, or catch an early Pika. Uh, both runners st sticking with boy one. What are your thoughts on that? I can't say I'm a fan of this strategy. Uh, I would say the girl character is always the best option, uh, particularly girl three, but one, two, and four are also acceptable options. How about you? Yeah, so I am a girl one stan. Um, I think she looks closest to me, and that. but also, you know, if you're going to pick a girl, she is the easiest one to get to, though I do have to respect people who go for girl three it is the most inputs to get to her, but she's also canon. Yes, as in the uh, manga or one of the... I believe it's I the think... anime. It's in the anime? Okay. Um, yes, I like to mix it up with the, the girl options, uh, kind of mm -hmm. see which one's working with for me at the time. Some of them have, uh, you know, go through phases, um, but can never go wrong with uh, girl one. Oh, yeah. Uh, like, I am definitely down for girls 2 and 4, uh, though I tend to only select them in Joy-Con moments. <laughs> Alright, and as both uh, runners are have set their options, pretty s standard Pokémon stuff, uh, setting st text to fast, turning off uh, animation, battle animations, and skipping movies, we will be getting into the first catch of the race. Yeah, um, if there's anyone... Uh, who is new to Let's Go here, uh, the way that this game works, unlike other tr more traditional mainline Pokemon games, is a lot closer to the Pokemon Go app, where our runners will be using motion controls to actually physically throw the Pokeballs at the various Pokemon, um, and it is one of the most interesting aspects of this run because, as we can see, we've got a tracker, and Spider has 50 different Pokémon planned. 
Uh, this is because over the course of the run, we're going to need to get 50 unique entries in our Pokedex in order to gain access to Koga's gym in order to beat the game. Yes, that being one of the dominating uh, factors of uh, routing this uh, this speed run, and uh, it will be a big make or break in deciding um, who comes out on top. Uh, the catches from every, everything from the experience into uh, how many catches you're doing and how many levels you're getting for the Pokemon. Um, it's yeah, is kind of what makes this run unique and makes it uh, a lot of people's favorite uh, Pokemon speed run. Yeah, especially uh, in the early game until uh, we get the Pokemon Flute. Uh, the vast majority of the experience points we get is going to come from the Pokemon catches we do. Yes, uh, the experience is uh, a little bit different in this game. Uh, as you'll see in some of the early trainer battles, you will get um, very low experience from trainer battles. Um, I think one of the first trainers gives you nine experience points, uh, one of the Radiant Forest trainers. And meanwhile, you can, you know, say catch a Caterpie and that can give you 200 experience points. Uh, so it's a very drastic difference. And um, so even if you were going through the run and I don't know, seeing how fast you could get to Koga without catching any Pokemon, um, it would still be very difficult uh, to get by without catching anything because of the experience gap you'd have. Yeah, and a lot of that is due to... Oh, Pengi is checking stats. That is a quirky Eevee. So neutral nature. Uh, always a I solid did, option. I did not get a chance to read the characteristic, um, which is relevant because it determines how AVs, which are this game's additional stat that comes from doing battles and leveling up, come into play. Uh, each characteristic is tied to one of a uh, number of different stats, and as our runners go through, uh, that stat is more likely to gain AVs on level up. Yeah, so uh, the characteristic will, will give you kind of an extra roll uh, in a sense of uh, getting an AV in that specific stat, along with um, whatever uh, nature you have. So if you're a plus attack nature, you're more likely to get uh, attack AVs, and if you are a uh, minus nature, like minus special attack, say, then you won't get any AVs in that, unless you have a characteristic in that nature. Um, mm -hmm. So uh, the AVs will dictate the um, stat spread for especially the starters, um, and we will see that uh, I know Spider will definitely be tracking the AVs and kind of getting a sense of where um, you know, seeing if it is attack or special attack or speed might be higher than usual and using that to inform some battle decisions later down the road. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I am primar primarily a Pika runner, so um, the big the big early AVs I'm looking for is like one, if I get an attack AV at level six, I am over the moon. Uh, does <laughs> AV ha have any particular important stat thresholds for its AVs that you want to hit early on? Um, you know, it's I think with EV it's flexible enough that you're not too worried if you're you know, not getting attack AVs you're not getting special attack AVs um, you know, it can always be made up with an experience. Um, I know I, I will, you know, even run minus attack or minus special attack um, sometimes just because it's you know, doable with uh some good catch luck so it will be helpful to improve some ranges you know if you have uh in the early game ev is much more reliant on attack um because it'll be using headbutt most of the time so some things in mount moon in particular you will want to be able to hit the ranges on like james's coughing or uh, the super nerd fight um yeah and, but as long as you're hitting level 15 by that time you're feeling pretty confident regardless mm -hmm. Yeah, and that level 15 threshold is the first of the really occasionally difficult to hit uh, gem requirements. Uh, we want to be able to make sure that we hit level 15 by Misty in order to get into her gym. Uh, but we've got, you know, another 30 minutes before we really need to worry about that. Right. Uh, for now, we're going through, we're learning about how to 
uh, play with Eevee and play, in particular, play dress up. Um, and now we're off to the races, as it were. Yeah, now we are going to be heading to Viridian Forest and beginning uh, first. Well, first we are beginning our first uh, trainer battle outside of the rival. Um, we'll be two shotting this Rattata. Uh, in Pikachu, you would normally see the stats, um, the level six stats on this uh, trainer fight. However, uh, Eevee gets one less experience point from uh, the rival one fight, so we will not be seeing the stats. Uh, upon level. We will not be seeing the level up on this fight. We'll have to wait till the next fight. It is wild that Eevee is exactly what XP off. Yeah. It seems like such an easy thing The you know, well, I would say that the game designers could have put in, but uh, I'm also assuming they're probably not planning with what are the speedrunners going to do <laughs> and what, yeah. what's going to benefit them. <laughs> Like, I'm pretty sure the game designers were assuming we've already caught, you know, a couple Pidgeys, a couple Rattatas by now, mm. or like level seven or eight. Yeah, we are uh, perhaps not playing, playing the game as intended by avoiding all <laughs> the catches and doing just enough catches to get by. Um, Interesting but... uh, little bit of tech as Spider mm -hmm. runs into the forest guardhouse. Um, before you get into the forest for the first time, you actually have a buff to your catching ability. So runners like Pengi here have the option of catching this Weedle early uh, with a boosted catch rate for the 1C throw. It's very low leveled, uh, but it won't give you a lot of experience points. But if you do see things like the Frick or Bulbasaur or the Wild Pikachu in the forest, you now not only have the catch chain to make the rarer things slightly more common, but you also are now able to summon the second player uh, and not only get a boost to your catch rate, but also additional experience for the synchronized throw. And uh, just taking a look, we just saw uh, Spider's level up, and I believe that it was a minus attack plus uh, special defense, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so... Uh, not in ideal nature. Uh, special defense is already Eevee's strongest stat, and uh, adding more to it is not really that helpful. Um, it, one could say it's the worst nature possible for Eevee. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that said, um, the runners throughout this tournament have done a lot of work um, getting the like alternate routes for when you get bad natures planned and ready to go so i'm sure that if spiders here running with that uh minus attack ev they have the strats in mind ready to go yeah i'm confident that they know what they're doing and uh, we'll probably see them to controller brock um, because of the minus attack and uh, we might see them to control or some additional fights, uh, depending on what their experience looks like. Um, but yeah, Spiders definitely, I'm confident that they know what they're doing and how to mitigate the minus attack. Mm -hmm. um, Spider picking up the lure, uh, which is our first instance of seeing lure. Uh, Pokemon in various areas have various levels they can be at. Uh, within a certain range. Lures allow them to go even further beyond and will make sure that any Pokemon that spawn in while the lure is active are one level higher than their normal maximum level. Yes, and as we're seeing Spider locking up uh, their first catch, uh, did bury the bug. Uh, I don't know how you feel about that. Are you on the uh, always bury the bugs bandwagon or never bury? I've had so many level 7 bugs break out, I <laughs> I do not trust them. I always bury. I wasn't always bury, but I've been kind of uh, playing with the other side recently, and it hasn't uh, come back to bite me yet, so I might be switching to a no bury uh, strategy. <laughs> um, well, let's not bury the lead oh. on the, this conversation. <laughs> Uh, for reference, the uh, berry does add a slightly higher catch rate. I believe 
for uh, the one controller bug catch, it's uh, between 10 and 15% uh, odds increase. So it's your personal, you know, uh, how much you're comfortable <laughs> with taking a risk. Um, but it's still not a guaranteed catch at one controller. Whereas with two controller, it's much more likely to get in and uh, can be much more confident about uh, securing that catch. Yeah. And also, um, uh, you may see runners who would normally not go for the bugberry in PB attempts going for it here in the tournament, just to ensure you get the uh, first throw bonus experience. Because yes. at this point, you know, every little bit counts, especially if you're someone like Spider, whose EV has that minus attack stat. Yeah, Spider will definitely be uh, trying to maximize uh, catch experience as much as possible. Um, like you said, with that first catch bonus, first ball bonus, um, getting excellence, two controller catches, all of these things add up to um, getting as much experience points as possible from each catch. Um, Glowing Pokemon, as uh, we'll see appear um, throughout the run, uh, give an extra bonus. Some of these will be supersized, which will get an, even another bonus on top of that. And mm -hmm. these things will kind of uh, multiply to uh, give some pretty wild stat number uh, experience points. Mm -hmm. uh, Spider heading into Route 2 uh, with four Pokemon in his belt. Um, what he will be looking for, let's see what he's got already. Uh, he's got the bugs only, so he will be looking for a bell sprout. Um, and potentially, there we oh, go. There we go. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if a uh, goes for a Rattata or a Pidgey as, as well, especially if they're glowing just for some added EXP. Yeah, what are your thoughts on the early rat versus the early bird versus skipping them? Um, it, I kind of weigh it based on what my bug situation is at. If they're close to evolving, um, I might go for the early rats uh, to kind of push that through, so that way I can do an early deposit and get them out of my party in Mount Moon um, in that first kind of deposit window. Um, if they're still pretty early on, but my EV experience is okay, um, then I might pass on it. Um, for reference, both of these... Pokemon will give you, you know, an early catch and uh, some early EXP, which is beneficial, but you're also marking them off for later um, as you won't be able to catch them and then evolve them. You'd have to catch their evolved forms by themselves, which is also not the worst thing in the world. Raticate and Pidgeotto are both doable catches. Yeah. Um, and I actually learned recently that if you catch a glowing Raticate, it's actually worth a shocking amount of experience. Yes, definitely. Um, we, I see a lot of runners do that Route 10 catch, go for the Raticate and try to level um, do get a lot of level ups out of that and uh, try to evolve their party before heading into Mount Moon. Um, or you can, you know, Raticates are all throughout on various routes um, so they can be a nice uh, EXP bump uh, wherever you find them. Mm -hmm. And so Spider is our first one into the rival cutscene here in Pewter City. Uh, has the Bell Sprout ready. Uh, has Eevee at level 10 with Double Kick. Does go ahead and switches the Bell Sprout into slot 2, which probably means you were right in calling the 2C Brock fight. Yeah, I think this is a safe bet, especially just being level 10 for the Eevee. Um, if he had gotten up to, say, you know, level 13, then you might be able to do it so EV solo, but uh, with this strat, um, he will be able to, you know, secure those knockouts more easily and not leave anything up to chance. Um, either will be, we'll see if you have to double kick and vine whip or just uh, tail whip and vine whip. Um, and if he has a solid bell sprout, he can uh, get through this pretty quickly. Yeah. With the Bell Sprout already being level 9 from being caught outside of the forest, um, that is also going to help compared to catching it in the forest where it only, would only be level 7 unless you got some catch XP on top of it. 
All right, looks like he's gonna double up on the Geo Dude with the double kick and the Vine Whip. And you'll see that double kick is not doing half damage, but the Vine Whip is more than making up for it. And meanwhile, Pengi is starting the Brock fight as well, um, which he will be one controlling with Eevee because he is not minus attack um, and will be doing the traditional fight. Looks like Spider's opting for the uh, Tail Whip and Vine Whip. Um, bringing Onyx down to, gosh, what is that, like, 30%? Yeah, about so, and then Eevee's just able to tap it in, and, uh, yeah, so, not too bad, definitely, uh, you know, not as fast as the one controller, because you're, you know, taking the extra turns to select Bellsprout's moves, but, uh, it would definitely be a lot worse if you were to try to force the one controller. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Consistency over speed is often the name of the race when you've got uh, slightly suboptimal stats. And as we see, Pengi now going to be doing the two shots on the Onyx. Uh, let's see, both runners catch counts are looking pretty similar with the op uh, only difference being that Pengi has a Pidgey from uh, that they caught, uh, whereas Spider does not. Yeah, I did notice that Spider did get a speed AV on the EV. Um, how relevant are individual speed AVs, or do you really just need a bulk of them before they start mattering? Uh, it can be helpful um, for EV to, you know, EV has enough defensive bulk that. It's not too detrimental if you get outsped by things um, outside of the rival fights, um, you know, but just the random trainers, you know, you can take a hit. It loses, you know, a few seconds, obviously. So any speed AVs you can get where you can, uh, you know, speed outspeed everything from, you know, maybe the Kangaskhan in Mount Moon um, or that Vulpix Cadaver fight as well. Um, or some of the routes, uh, uh, nine trainers as well. Just having that little extra speed to be able to save a few seconds is always beneficial. Um, and the only main uh, the big speed uh, point for Eevee is you don't want to get outsped by rivals Pidgeotto in the SSAN and the tower fight um, because it knows sand attack and that can make your fight not so fun if you get sand attack turn one <laughs> and, and possibly turn two and <laughs> turn three. And how many AVs does it take to get the outspeed assuming a neutral nature? Oh, I have no idea. <laughs> I should probably look that up. Um, <laughs> but I kind of just, uh, I kind of just wing it. And if like, you know, if I outspeed, I do. If I don't, I don't. And it doesn't really change my strategy either way. So <laughs> it's, I leave it as a surprise. <laughs> It's a mystery. <laughs> um, both of our runners going down Route 3, uh, keeping their eyes open for a snake. Probably not the shiny one like last night's race, but still, if you do see one, it's a really useful uh, pickup because that's one less catch you have to worry about. Uh, then both of our runners going to buy a fish. Uh, we'll sh be shoving that fish directly into the boxes, not really worrying about those 15 levels it's going to need to evolve. Uh, but again, it is a very fast catch that is literally free. Yeah, they say an outrageous 500 Poké Dollars, but uh, that is quite the bargain for getting uh, one free catch. Uh, not even having to catch the Pokémon and get that time wasted is very fast and uh, mm -hmm. definitely worth doing. Yeah, and now we're seeing another uh, slight difference between uh, Pika and Eevee, where uh, we see our runner is going to go in, do the menuing to teach the headbutt TM that we got from Brock uh, before the first fight here, um, which also means our runners will be luring at this point. And I believe... Uh, if you have a lure going, all the Pokemon on every floor of Mount Moon are the same level. Uh, correct. Uh, so there will be an elevated level, and which will be giving more experience points than catching a low-level Pokemon. 
uh, and it will be also increasing the spawn rates uh, as you'll see when we get to the basement room that uh, we will be seeing more than likely seeing six seven different things spawn pretty quickly and there here there are three pokemon in particular that we're expecting to catch and expecting is an air quotes because clefairy can sometimes be a bit of a troll um, but we're also looking for Geodude in Paris. Um, and then there's a couple of surprise bonus mods we might be able to run into. Um, either everyone's favorite, uh, Pokemon from France, Chansey, or the evolved Clefable, both of which are rare spawns, but both of which are worth a lot of experience if you can catch them. And even a third, uh, bonus in the Onyx, uh, which can be uh, not as much experience, but uh, it's much more doable than, say, a Rock Tunnel Onyx. Uh, maybe a little divisive on whether you go for the Onyx or not. I always go for it, but it's early enough in the run that I'm willing to risk it. Uh, we'll see if in a race uh, the runners decide to go for that. Yeah, of course, it's always the question of... You know, when I was talking about the French Pokemon, I didn't actually mean Paris. <laughs> I, I knew what you meant, but yeah, that, that's a good <laughs> clarification. Um, that is a lot of everyone's favorite mushroom friend uh, down here in the Mount Boone basement. Uh, yes, getting more than enough, and looks like Spider was waiting around for uh, possibly a glowing Pokemon. I uh, saw it. I believe a glowing Geodude pop up on the screen. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, this yeah. is kind of the epicenter of Mount Moon where you're going to be wanting to farm catch it and get most of your catching done because there's so many spawns in such a small area. Um, mm -hmm. And the ladder's right there, so you can kind of go up and go back down and respawn the room if you really needed. Yeah, and one of the things you'll often see, uh, especially in these race settings, is runners waiting a little bit for the saturation of Pokemon in the area to fill up before they start catching because of the way the catch chain mechanic works. If you uh, catch the first Pokemon you see, it's more likely to spawn. And since we only really want to catch a given Pokemon once because it is... Uh, not total number of catches we're looking for, it is just unique dex entries. The catch chain mechanic, which is great for shiny hunters, great for people farming for high stats, and all that stuff, kind of works to our detriment as speedrunners. Yes, so we will be trying to be as efficient as, efficient as possible, catching uh, things only once, and, uh, you know, Although if you were to say come across a shiny that maybe you've already caught, some runners may opt to catch that again. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, Spider, uh, missing the bonus circle on the Geo Dude. Uh, those of you watching at home will notice that when a runner is going up to catch a Pokemon, there is a colored circle that is constantly shrinking on the screen. If you throw the ball inside that circle, you get bonus experience points and your odds to catch go up. As the circle gets smaller, it crosses through uh, three different thresholds. So missing the throw is actually really rough, especially on a decent experience Pokemon in Geodude. But while it's glowing, because that bonus experience is multiplicative, uh, it hurts a little bit worse than it would if it was just a normal Geodude. Ooh, but Spider getting bailed out with the Clefairy spawning. Uh, that will save the EXP a little bit. And as we kind of uh, referenced earlier, we are trying to get to level 15 before uh, exiting Mount Moon because that is a requirement for getting into Mistus Gym. Yeah, nice, excellent throw from Spider here onto the Clefairy. And I do also believe Spider got the double Moonstone. Do you want to explain how that works? Sure. Uh, so. Uh, in this room, there is a hidden item, a moonstone, that's in the center of the room. And so it will always be there on, you know, the first day uh, that you're running the game. And by first day, I mean, you know, like 24-hour day. Um, so 
what the, the runners did at the very start of this run is set their clock to about 11.33, 11.34, um, some PM or 23, 34. Um, and they did that so they could get to this room and pick up the first stone and then it would hit midnight and then the stone would respawn uh, and they could pick it up again. Um, the stone doesn't always respawn uh, for a second time, but um, it has a fairly high chance of coming back. So if you can time your run just right, uh, it can be uh, really beneficial to get that second moonstone so that you can evolve another Pokemon later on in the run. Um, it's Gen 1, so there are a fair amount of Pokemon that evolve via a moonstone. Um, so it's a nice uh, securing an extra catch later on in the run. Uh, Pengi, uh, getting trolled by Clefairy spawns, d decides to give up and go for a glowing Geodude just to try and make him some experience. Ooh. Gets bailed out by the Chansey! Here we go. Uh, do you know offhand what the odds of uh, getting the Chansey caught are? Ooh, um... I'm not sure of the exact odds. I know, I'm pretty sure it's... I think Clefable is in the 60s percent with uh, Raz ex, uh, Excellent Throw, and I think Chansey is higher than that, if that make, helps at all. Um, uh, but... What about Great Pokeball? Because uh, Pengi did not menu the second player over to Great Ball. Ooh, still got it first try. Still, still got it, got... no problem. Oh my god. Uh, Technically that's going to be level 14 on Butterfree. That's going to be Ooh. rough because that is a lot of moves taught on Butterfree. Butterfree learns the three powder moves at the same time. Yeah, you would have liked to see a deposit right before going for the Chansey uh, so that only Eevee and Bellsprout were getting the level ups. Um, but uh, at least... Uh, you know, got the catch first ball, and Pengi will be secure getting into Misty's gym, no problem. So, but yeah, as you mentioned, it is going to have to sit through these extra level ups and for all the moves that each Pokemon is going to try to learn. Yeah, which, you know, when you're in that situation, you're kind of panicking, like, oh god, how am I going to get all the XP I need to get into Misty's gym? Am I going to have to try and farm things outside in the grass. Uh, it's easy enough to just for forget to go into your party and do that menu. Um, especially with race nerves going, so no shame, no blame. Oh yeah, totally understandable, and uh, as you can see, Pengi's now emptying out their party uh, to make sure nothing else gets any more levels, uh, and we'll be heading out of the room uh, having caught everything that's needed. Mm -hmm. and then so some. yeah, uh, chat pointing out that's about a 61% throw. All right, so, you know, better than half, but <laughs> oh. uh, Peggy made it look easy and had no problem with it. Mm -hmm. And let's see, Spider at, I believe that's a uh, still at level 14, uh, but in, should be getting enough uh, experience from these next two battles to hit level 15, so should be all good for getting Misty's Gym. Um, but we'll have a tough time uh, Okoing this, both these Pokemon, as you saw with the Voltorb and now this Magnemite, that, yeah, that's not going to one shot. Oh? Oh, Peggy? Peggy going for Onyx? <laughs> Blowing Onyx? You know, you gotta have some fun. Yeah. Not switching to double greats for this either. Ooh, tried to go for the greater excellent, but that is uh, not the easiest to do on the Onyx. Mm -hmm. Still gets it. Doesn't matter. Yo. Now, of course, time for the most important question. Does Pengi ride the Onyx? It would be a memorable moment for the tournament, and so I would say definitely do it, but uh, I will understand if he decides not to, because it is extremely slow. Is it slower than walking? Oh, definitely. 
Oh jeez, I didn't realize it was that <laughs> bad. Like, I knew it was a meme. I'm, like, 80% confident it's slower than walking. Mm -hmm. um, but it does look fine, and um, it is a meme. And, you know, maybe if it comes around later in the run, um, you know, we can convince Pengi to pull out the Onyx uh, for fun. Yeah. Uh, chat pointing out that the Onyx catch was about a 50 50 to stay in, so. Pengi with the high odds catches. Yeah, and it's going to come out of Mountain with a great catch count. Uh, three catches ahead of Spider at the moment, uh, where Spider has kind of just caught the the standard uh, kind of expected catches at this point. No real bonuses. Mm -hmm. And I believe Pengi was a neutral nature, whereas Spider does have the minus attack. With Pengi's additional levels, uh, we might be able to see... Uh, him make up a non-trivial amount of time over Spider with just the ability to hit ranges that Spider's not going to be able to at this time. That is true. Um, most of the... I think even with minus attack, Spider should be okay for... Uh, shouldn't see too much difference in Cerulean and Nugget Bridge, but um, after those fights, uh, the uh, difference in attack might uh, come into play and save a few Pengi a few turns. Mm -hmm. uh, so right now, Spider is at the Move Tutor, which both Pika and Eevee visit, uh, but whereas Pika only picks up one move from the Move Tutor, Eevee will be getting three, and each one is pretty busted. Uh, Buzzy Buzz is in a special electric move that always paralyzes. Uh, Bouncy Bubble is a special water move that uh, uh, restores HP. And um, Sizzly Slide is a fire, physical fire type move that always burns. Mm -hmm. So three moves that will be very useful. We'll be using all their functionalities, uh, especially on Nugget Bridge, and uh, make EV a give it a lot wider range of coverage to kind of make up for the uh, lower attack stats that Pikachu uh, has in comparison. Yeah, um, but Spider is now qualified to enter Misty's gym. Is going to take out this one trainer real quick uh, before taking on the gym leader herself. Uh, so that is a 38 attack uh, for Pengi's Eevee already. I did not catch the special attack, uh, which I assume is more relevant throughout this these next couple of fights. Once you're out of the moon. Yeah, we'll be seeing... Um an even amount of physical and special attacks, I would say. Um, but because we're going to be hitting everything, or nearly everything, super effectively, uh, it should be all right um, either way. Pengi could actually uh, opt to headbutt or sizzly slide a few more things to save some inputs or special effect, uh, super effective text. Um, but I'm not sure if he's uh, operating off the notes that have the more advanced notes that might have those calcs uh, available, or if he's still uh, working with some more beginner notes that kind of just have the standard. Yeah. Uh, is getting the one shot on the Jesse and James coughing, though, which is a nice. really nice pickup. Yes, that coughing does no poison gas, and getting poisoned during this fight can be pretty frustrating and forcing an extra menu to heal. Mm -hmm. Nice two-turn fight. Uh, meanwhile, Spider taking on Misty and Starmie, tanking, uh, you know, that special defense coming into play, tanking a skull, no problem. Yeah, uh, did not even get burned. Yeah. And let's see. 30, 33. 30. Might do some check out what his stats AV spread is like. So it looks like, uh, unsurprisingly, no attack AVs for Spider, but has gotten a couple special attack AVs, which is, you know, better than nothing. So um, at least having a little bit boost there, but otherwise is probably looking at more uh, bulk-related AVs. 
uh, Pengi opting into a few other early catches. Uh, sees a Rattata and a Psyduck here on the way to Cerulean City. Um, has just caught the rat, has marked the Psyduck on his tracker. Perhaps going for it for its glowing. I wouldn't say I usually advise, you know, going for uh, the Rat 4 duck, but because uh, it does kind of um, wall you from getting Gold Duck later. But it is a guaranteed easy catch and is just going to have even more experience going into Nugget Bridge. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Gold Duck isn't always strictly necessary. However, you know, having some room to have options open is does have value in this game in this run. Oh, definitely. Uh, you know, it's great to have an early catch count, uh, but you're uh, definitely want to keep those options open for later to have as much flexibility as possible because you're never uh, quite sure when, you know, you might have a Route 6 or a Route 10 where just nothing spawns. Um, yeah. Pengi even going for another bonus catch with the Ekin spawning. Goes for a super fast throw, unfortunately gets trolled by the Ekans attacking exactly at the wrong time. Um, but yeah, Kengi is at 18 catches, which is wild for this stage of the game. Yeah, having 18, you know, before Misty is, uh, it's hard to get much higher than that at this point. <laughs> mm -hmm. Let's see. Meanwhile, Spider will probably look to uh, make up a few catches. We'll see once he approaches Route 25 if uh, he might see if anything is spawning up there. Uh, otherwise, he could be in for a long Route 6. Yeah, I've seen uh, like runners go for the Venonat if it's close. Um, if you're Spider, what other uh, spawns up there would pull you to do early catches? Uh, typically just Benanat and Meowth. Um, Meowth is an EB ex exclusive Pokemon and um, mm -hmm. is, if you see, you know, one of those two, you might go for them if they're close by. If you see both of them, you're probably going to go for both um, just to get two fairly, uh, with two controller catches, both of them should are, you know, fairly safe to get in. Um, mm -hmm. You're not going to evolve either of them, but, uh, you know, they're nice bonus catches to have. Yeah, and it's not like uh, they show up at any other really useful point during the run. So the fact that you aren't going to evolve them uh, doesn't matter because you're not getting locked out of their Evo regardless. Yeah, definitely. Um, there, I believe this is the only place that Meow spawns, and Venonat does spawn some other places, but nowhere that will be going, uh, or probably won't be going <laughs> on the run. <laughs> and he is done teaching uh, Evie the special moves, uh, making his way into Misty's gym as... Did Spider get faked out? Uh, I believe... I was not... I was looking at Pengi, uh, so I'm not <laughs> sure, but... Uh... Yeah, that Evie... That Meowth does have fake out and uh, tends to go for pretty frequently. <laughs> Yeah, which, even for uh, Pika, it's annoying because uh, Pika's special move, Zippy Zap, does have the same priority as Extreme Speed, and all my VGC player friends know that that does not beat Fake Out. Yes. <laughs> uh, fake Out with a very high priority, and uh, pretty much the only thing that's going to uh, go over Zippy Zap. But Eevee does not have those priority moves. Um, or it had quick attack at one point, but it's not really used. Um, so we are just going in the standard move order. Um, and yeah, now Spider facing off against the Rocket Grunt and almost done with Mega Bridge while Pengi is starting the Misty fights and uh, could possibly, uh, I don't know what their special attack is at the moment, but uh, it's possible he could one-shot this Starmie with this high level. Yeah. And, you know, any dodge of attacks from that Starmie in a storm. 
yeah, um, it'll be nice to, you know, with the two shots, uh, you know, it's not, it's still safe. Let's see. Mm-hmm. It's the hits. It does get the one hit knockout, which is nice, uh, just to save some, save an extra turn of inputs and possible status lag from the par- paralysis. Uh, just takes it out nice and easy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so both, both of our runners having two badges on the board, uh, we've got spiders through Nugget Bridge, not really seeing anything spawning up here in the grass. Uh, so yeah. just heading on through the maze of trainers as Pengi makes his way up to his rival fight. And as you'll have seen with spiders uh, kind of movement throughout that little maze, uh, the, sp- the trainers do have very narrow lines of vision that you can kind of uh, abuse by uh, going right in between them. As you saw that, you know, kind of zigzag motion where it went up and then down. Um, we're able to kind of uh, skirt our way around a lot of trainers throughout the run. Yeah. Um, this, of course, differentiates differentiates itself from the mount skips that this category is named after the lack of use of by the fact that it's not abusing uh, mechanics with mounting or dismounting or movement speed to get by the trainers. It's just moving around the lines, such as in an old school Pokemon game, just not standing on the tile that that trainer can see. Um, I don't believe we've seen anyone attempt the Mount Skips for this tournament, uh, just for fun. Uh, still, <laughs> you'd still have to fight the trainers in Victory Road. Uh, that's the only place where the Mount Skip is really viable, uh, because by the time you have uh, a mount that can is capable of doing the skips, uh, the only uh, trainers that you're going to pass while on a mount are in Victory Road. So that's the only place it really comes into during the run. Um, but it does save a few minutes and uh, skip some potentially scary fights uh, for the run. Mm. All right, Spider remembering not to ditch Bill and is got his SS tickets and going to be heading out to the next, oh, after going through the rest of Cerulean, uh, kind of backtracking a bit, we'll be going on to the next catching portion of the run. Route 6 being slightly less critical uh, in the EV run versus the Pika run, but still a really good place to shore up your catch count. Um, If you want, you can catch an early-ish Pidgey to evolve into Pidgeotto, though this does lock you out of Pidgeot. Um, Jigglypuff's here, Vulpix is here, Abra is here if you get lucky. Uh, if you're really lucky, Spider will see our second chancy of the run. Yeah, do you want to talk a little bit about, I know we're not having Pika runners today, but why Route 6 is so important for Pika on the other hand? Yeah, so uh, as, as we've seen, Eevee gets, you know, just incredible coverage in the sta- stage of the run. Uh, Pikachu, on the other hand, is sitting in the corner crying because the best coverage option it has access to right now is, in fact, Double Kick. Um, So to get through the fights on Route 9, as well as the Boat Rival fight, uh, we want to pick up either an Abra and then immediately evolve it into Kadabra, or more commonly a Growlithe in order to have the ability to deal with Things like a Sand True on Route 9 and our rivals Oddish. Yeah, so Pikachu needing some backup support uh, to controlling some of those fights, whereas Eevee, as long as you're high enough level, um, it has no problem taking care of those mm-hmm. things by itself. Exactly. And of course, the other nice thing about Eevee uh, is that, as previously mentioned, the secondary effect of Bouncy Bubble is that it heals you for half the damage it does. So Eevee really doesn't need to stop and heal throughout the Nugget Bridge because you're just 
passively gaining all that health back through your use of Bouncy Bubble. Yeah, and if you're hitting enough, um, you know, hitting enough ranges uh, or have enough uh, bulk uh, going through these fights, you can actually go the entire way up until um, the Lorelei, uh, you know, Rocket Grunt fight and not have to heal that entire time. In the meantime, Spider C in the underground, they pick up a hidden nugget as well as a lure in an item ball. Um, that nugget is always in the same place under the fifth set of lights coming down from Cerulean. I'm going to hit the lure. As previously mentioned, lures are great. And we'll see what we see. All right, some Pidgeys off the bat. Uh, goes up, picks the rare candy right away. There's a... mm. more birds. Mm, more birds. <laughs> yeah, but one is glowing, so that's at least something. True. Uh, Pengi is seeing a meowth, is neglecting to go for it today. Um, which you know, fair. It was kind. It was relatively close, but it was getting kind of up in that other trainer's business and like trainer vision is really really generous right up until it isn't <laughs> right uh, yeah may have just opted to not risk it and you know isn't a comfortable place uh, with catches that uh, can afford to pass on the meowth yeah is already far enough ahead that you don't really need to go out of your way for the extra bonus catch Spider fighting the fox. So that is two catches here on Route 6. And uh, I'm inter interested to see what his level will be like after this catch. Mm -hmm. Typically for the rival fight, for Eevee, you're you know, looking for level 18 at the minimum. Um, and he is level 18, so... Uh, that is nice, but getting a few extra levels uh, to, like I mentioned before, you uh, want to be sure you're outspeeding that Pidgeotto and uh, into the next... Ooh, I was a little worried about the trainer pass. Um, yeah. Like, into the next round. <laughs> yeah. I, I say it every time I see one, see one like that. If I did that exact movement in that exact location, they would have seen me 100%. <laughs> yeah, it's... Uh, I don't know how their vision works because sometimes I'm, you know, totally confident, you know, that I'm going to walk right through and I get spotted. And other times I'm like, oh, no, I totally messed up and I get through just fine. Spider going for uh, a safety strat that we neglected to mention earlier, probably because we were uh, busy losing our mind over uh, Pengi's catches in Mount Moon, picked up the PP up that is outside of Mount Moon on the way to Cerulean uh, to sell instead of the fossil. Um, I've seen a number of runners doing this as a sort of backup, keeping the fossils in their pocket as an extra two catches just in case things go badly, especially because we're still uh, in a race. There's still a number of spawn locations our runners need to go to where things might just not choose to spawn. So having that backup in Spider's pocket might be really clutch for them. Yeah, especially with this low catch count and, like you said, not knowing how future routes are going to go, having those two backups uh, is definitely a nice perk. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we've already handed out the bonus award for getting kicked by Koga. We don't need to hand out any more. <laughs> right. <laughs> All of that is Spider's forte. You know... Although he does it intentionally, not unintentionally. <laughs> yeah. And like, let's face it, to get kicked by Koga does involve a lot of repetition, a lot of playing this game in general. You still have to go through all these early stages, so... One hopes that the that little bit of muscle memory uh, doesn't kick in. Uh... Look, streamer, we'll get there when we get there. We've got hours before we need to worry about faint. Yeah. 
All right, and as Spider is heading into the next rival fight, Pangy will be getting ready to do his own Route 6 and add to his already uh, very large catch total. Mm -hmm. Whereas uh, Spider is just starting the boat rival fight, um, which should be relatively straightforward, uh, going for a standard uh, two-controller setup, uh, allowing the partner, Bellsprout, to throw X items at the Eevee while the Eevee takes out the rest of the team. Yep, and safely outspeeding the Pidgeotto, so it uh, should be just fine. No shenanigans going on. Uh. Level 19. So, I don't know. Uh, what are the, like, the next major ranges that you're worried about as an EV runner? Um, let's see. So, the Sand Shrew fight that's coming up on Route 9, that uh, can be a risk to... Uh, usually you want to be ideally level 20 to secure that one sh shot uh, with the bouncy bubble. Mm -hmm. um, it's still, you know, definitely doable at level 19, but it can be arranged depending on your special attack. Um, and that Sandshrew, as you probably know from Pika version, can be a little frustrating if you do not one-shot it. I don't like talking uh, about that. Ooh! <laughs> Pengy with the instant jiggly! That is a good start. Solid source of EXP, and uh, let's see. Ooh, he is going to raz it. Mm -hmm. Misses the first throw, unfortunately. Yeah. Uh, ooh, and the second and one. It looked like the second one just came out a little bit early. Yeah. Um, which, you know, if you're trying to go for, like, the cheeky timing and throw the ball just in time for the circles to come back, like, um, obviously there is a risk to accidentally uh, throwing a little early and it hitting the Pokemon before the circle actually does show up. Looks like he thought about going for that glowing Rattata, but then probably remembered that he already has one. <laughs> Which, you know... Ooh, don't I... hit that train! Ooh, <laughs> that was awfully close to being in that gentleman's vision. <laughs> That's how my last run died. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, I was doing uh, practice the other night, and I was going for a Jigglypuff and just ran directly into his vision, and I'm like, huh! But as it turns out, all the trainers on Route 6 only have, like, one Pokémon anyway, so if you do get spotted on this route, it's not actually the end of the world. Yeah, as we'll see with if Spider nails this uh, trainer skip again, Nice. Uh, as you mentioned, both of those easy. trainers only have one, so uh, especially on Eevee, you can one-shot either Pokemon, so it's, uh, you know, not a huge time uh, loss. Yeah. I think it's a little trickier to go for one-shots, but, you know, still possible under the right circumstances. All right, and looks like Pengi now going to attempt the pass, taking it slow. Ooh, but that Abra did pop up in the corner. All right. Uh, Decides not to go for to it. Go for it. Yeah, and both of our uh, runners getting a little bit of a, a cheeky time save with the lures running out before they do the shop to buy more, so that they skip the dialogue option to be asked if they want to buy more. It's like Pengi is doing the standard selling the fossil. Mm -hmm. It did not pick up the PP up. Um, probably because it isn't I, I would be surprised if it was actually in the notes. Um, I believe it's in the beginner notes to pick it up, and then you don't sell the Pokeballs in exchange, just so you have. Mm -hmm. um, but I think once you're doing more intermediate or advanced stats, um, you skip the PP up. Yes. Yes, unless you're doing marathon save stuff, as Spider is. Yeah. I honestly have to admit that I've gone through and built myself a bespoke set of 
marathon slash race safe notes. Uh, are there other things like that that you've... Uh, what are some of the things you've included in that? Uh, so I've... Mostly it's just the... For me, it's the advanced EV notes, but I've included, like, the note about picking up that PP up, and then the two controller fights for Giovanni, uh, Lance, and Champion. I haven't actually sat down and copied over the two controller Agatha notes yet. Yeah, it's still not one I've attempted either. Um, yeah. I, kind I of... just feel... Go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, I, I personally feel that one controller Agatha is safe enough as it is when you have the full restore, but I understand that I might just be playing with fire. That's kind of how I feel as well, and... Uh... You know, if I do have, you know, like the Rapidash in the back, I can always pull it out if things get, you know, sketchy. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, heal when needed. And just do that uh, instead of... But there are some advantages that through the two controller of, you know, having fewer turnarounds. And um, I can see why people go for it. For sure. But there is something to be said for just... Uh, doing what you're comfortable with and what you remember and what you can kind of just execute very quickly rather than trying to pick up some new strats that uh, you might be more uh, liable to mess up on. Yeah. Like, you know, that it's one thing to bust out a risky strat that you've done a hundred times in, you know, your actual uh, PB attempts versus going for a strat that you just learned about for the tournament took notes on and then you're like either like triple checking your notes and taking you know an extra five to ten seconds per input or you make a mistake and everything falls apart like a house of cards yeah i look remembering some other races uh, that have happened so far in this tournament i don't know how you know some people have been you know, typing into chat, what's this strat? <laughs> like, how do I two controller Lance again? Okay, got it. And then they just execute it, no problem. Um, yeah. I, uh, I don't think I could handle doing that on the fly. Yeah, I just have one question for those people, which is simply, what's it like to be the greatest gamer who ever lived? <laughs> Must be nice. Right. Uh, ooh, Spider going for the pass and makes it, not hesitating on that Picnicker. Well, that's and a Firo. Firo, Spiro, Nidoran. Yeah, double boys. So, two out of four useful things. Definitely could be worse. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is Route 10 that Spider is on. This is a very important catch section, uh, especially for him with his current catch count. Uh, we are going to be looking for a few different things. There is the male and female Nidoran lines. Uh, there is, uh, obviously, as you saw, Spiro and Firo. And uh, Krabby can be uh, a nice bonus here. And then Rattata and Radicate. I think that's everything. Oh, uh, and of course, Chansey. Yeah, yes. <laughs> um, spider having to run down the bird. Um, it is worth noting that the standard shopping route allots our runners one parentheses, one repel to use as they will uh, during the catching portion of the run. Uh, this repel can either be used to get out of a sticky situation, to uh, uh, dodge a Pokemon, uh, say at the end of Rock Tunnel, or it can be used in conjunction with a lure to despawn and then respawn in all the Pokemon in the area you're on. What is your personal feelings, Gavin, on how best to use the repels? Uh, I definitely uh, do it situationally. Uh, I like to have it uh, for this route specifically uh, to, you know, if things aren't spawning the way I want. Um, if I would say probably here is where I would use it the most frequently to do the despawn and respawn. After that, I would, if I still have it, uh, use it to, as you mentioned, uh, get rid of some encounters that might be blocking the way, say if you're already done catching in Rock Tunnel or you're in Mansion, um, and mm -hmm. a lot of things are, you know, can be 
scurrying about and getting in your way without you realizing it. Um, uh, how about you? Um, so I'd love to save it for Mansion if those Nidorans would actually spawn for me. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I as a Pika runner, uh, catching a Nidoran is not quite hard required, but it's the closest thing we get outside of Staryu to a hard required catch. Yeah, there are some backups or alternatives, but uh, Nidoking is pretty important uh, in the Pikachu side to have some extra power and coverage, uh, especially in the uh, rocket hideout section. Um, and you can replicate those uh, some of those strats on the Eevee side as well. Um, depending on what your Eevee looks like, you may opt to use Nidoking as well. Or, um, But the more standard is just relying on Eevee. And ooh, looks like Okay. <laughs> Pengi stopped there for a minute. Uh, he was just hanging out, but uh, is back on the road. <laughs> yeah. Um, it does look like uh, Spider actually picked up two repels, so I'm going to go have to watch uh, their shopping route back, because, you know, having that second repel might actually come in clutch. <laughs> yeah, that can definitely be a good strategy if you are... Uh, do you feel like you want the added safety of being able to respawn twice. Uh, I've also seen runners use it on Route 17, uh, the X cycling road to reset the spawns there in case, you know, sometimes you're looking for a Ponyta and only Pidgeys show up or only Psyducks show up. So uh, having some uh, extra safety there can be definitely beneficial. Mm -hmm. For sure. And as chat is noting, uh, Spider really cleaning up on Route 10, getting basically everything that they, that they need and uh, going to be in a very good position after having a really low catch count uh, coming into this route. Yeah, that low 20 catch count at the start with a bunch of Evos in your pocket is a really good spot to be at. Um, my usual rule of thumb is I'm... I'm looking at, like, 30-ish, typically more than 30, uh, Pokemon co coming out of Rock Tunnel. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, having a couple of Evos in your pocket while still having 23 catches going into Rock Tunnel is a great start. Let's see, so, yeah, the... Nidoran female, the Bright Rutata, the Krabby, um, definitely lots of good options for evolving. Uh, and yeah, and meanwhile, Pengi is uh, taking care of the Route 9 trainer fights before doing his own Route 10. And Spider is going to uh, take care of this Rocket Grunt before heading into Rock Tunnel. Mm -hmm. Rocket Grunt has exactly one Raticate, relatively straightforward while uh, Lorelei gets to 3v1 the other grunts in a absolute display of the Elite Forest power. Unfortunately, we do not get to see that display of power, but we can safely assume that she, you know, disposes of them easily. Mm -hmm. uh, and then... <laughs> I mean, this is very on later in the run, but it's always funny to me that she says, when you see her in the late four, what took you so long? Meanwhile, we saw her two hours ago <laughs> <laughs> and made it all the way to the elite four by then, which I would think is pretty quick. Yeah, though I imagine she kind of just walked back directly and it's just like, um, weren't you gonna <laughs> come along? <laughs> but I guess, you know, we do need to pick up badges. Uh, chat pointing out that nah, she's just out here girl bossing. Fair enough. Can't argue with that. So, Pengi having a uh, little trouble, uh, not a little trouble, having little to no trouble uh, with uh, these Route 9 fights, being that he's still at a 
pretty solid level thanks to all those uh, early catches and that chancy. Mm -hmm. uh, so it should be just fine. And ooh, an ooh. instant Rhyhorn. Always like to see that. Yeah. And uh, Zubat for a spider, which is also a nice pickup. Uh, Zubat can be a little bit, bit trolly, but I did see some Manab berries in Spider's pocket, which will help the bat calm down a little bit and not hop all over the place. Uh, let's see how Pengi's initial Route 10 spawn looks. Uh, two Nidoran Manuals, a Nidorina, uh, not waiting for the fourth one to spawn, which, you know, fair. Gotta go fast. Yeah, I I don't know how you feel about Route 10. I definitely go back and forth with whether to stay patient and wait for, you know, good spot, get those four spawns or wait around for, you know, something that might not be appearing um, versus, you know, watching myself against the clock and trying to get out as quickly as possible. Yeah, it's an interesting balance um, because, you know, on the one hand, you know, you do want to make sure that you get all the spawns. Um, as a Pika player, you know, as previously mentioned, one of the considerations here is what spawns, which is a little less of a consideration for Eevee, though there are Nidoking strats that have started to be adopted in the Eevee version. Correct. Uh, it is something that I think are... I still debate whether they're the fastest option, but they are fun to use. Um, <laughs> And particularly if you have a less than stellar EV, um, as you know, Spider might be working with, that's you know, King Strats could be a good option. Um, Dang, but uh, that see. is uh, Peggy might also elect to just be like, okay, I'm already far enough ahead on catches, I've got my tw I've got 23. I can afford to burn some off because I've got I've done so many catches early that I've got room in the back to pick up things. And then the final thought here might be, well, I'll just use the Lorelei cutscene to respawn the route. Mm -hmm. So there are a number of st strategies at play. There are a number of different ways runners approach uh, this particular patch of grass. Um, we'll see what Pengi is going for here. Uh, if he decides to just leave it be and go into directly to Rock Tuttle, even being down uh, a little bit of catches, that might actually be the right call uh, to try and make up some time on Spider. Yeah, it would definitely get him uh, more an equal, like you said, time and uh, kind of place in the run. But I would be a little bit worried about, um, you know, there's a difference about between entering twenty three, entering Rock Tunnel with 23 and having a lot of potential Evos in your party versus entering at 23 and not having, you know, only having maybe one or two potential Evos in your party. Um, so I am curious, like you've said, if uh, he's going to use this lore like cutscene to respawn the route and hopefully uh, try again. Yeah. Um, and in Pengi's case in particular, uh, your lure ran out, Pengi. Your lure ran out. That Krabby's going to be low level. Oh, did he not renew it? I don't think he did. No, it's still 24. It's maybe, maybe I misread the menu. I I could just be wrong here. <laughs> That's fair enough. I mean, there's yeah. definitely times in my own runs where I'm not sure if, <laughs> like, did I press A or B on that one? <laughs> yeah. And, you know, just a lot to keep track of, you know, in these runs when you're performing it, much less when you're commenting two of them. Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, so as we saw, Pengi is able to get uh, a Krabby to spawn, which is a nice pickup. Um, and... Let's uh, find uh, a female Nidoran. Yes. Um, meanwhile, Spider continuing to do pretty well in Rock Tunnel. Um, has now the Machop in his party. Uh, as well as... As we saw the Zubat and the Rhyhorn. 
and we'll be looking for a graveler, a cubone, and I believe that's it. Oh, well, and there is one special bonus Pokemon that could spawn in Rock Tunnel. Yep, I've done enough diploma. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Kangaskhan, Kangaskhan, Kangaskhan. Oh, that too. I was thinking of Charmander, but yeah. <laughs> Oh yeah, that's, that, that is also fair. <laughs> uh, Pengi electing to cut the bush down, not going for uh, the extra Great Balls there. Um, immediately gets a Graveler spawn, which is a nice little burst of XP. Yeah, part of the reason we don't typically evolve a Geodude is uh, that uh, the Geodude provides good experience in Mount Moon, and the Graveler provides good experience in Rock Tunnel. Um, which are both beneficial for your starter and evolving some of your party, which uh, is typically uh, on that threshold of evolution. Ooh, and that was a supersized Graveler. Oh, wow. Well, you know, at least you don't have to worry about your EV XP. Ever. Um, yeah, 27 before the first fight in Rock Tumble is uh, quite, uh, <laughs> uh, quite the accomplishment. Um, those extra levels on uh, Looping Bell and uh, Nidoran are not ideal, but uh, you'll take those. Yeah. And then, you know, the Krabby uh, experience is just straight guess. Yes. Uh, as we'll see, Krabby, uh, along with Cubone and uh, Machop, all require four levels to evolve, which is not ideal, but doable. Um, so we do typically catch them and keep them in the party. Um, so having that burst of VXP is uh, just going to make Kingler that much quicker. And Spider getting his own Graveler. And nailing the excellent. And something we didn't uh, I don't think we mentioned earlier that uh, there are some different throwing techniques that runners do use for this game. Uh, obviously, there are motion controls. Um, Spider, uh, I've seen this firsthand, so I know he employs the underhand throw uh, when doing catches instead of the typical overhand, I guess, as overhand as you can be with Joy-Cons. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's why yeah. we see the balls kind of come out from above and have, have that high arch on them. Yeah, uh, the difference being, do you hold your Joy-Cons out horizontally and then flip them up, or do you hold them vertically and then flick them down? Right. Uh, spider electing not to throw for content and ignoring the Onyx. Maybe if one spawns on top of him, he'll go for it. <laughs> Yeah, even then, you know, I'd give it one chance, maybe, if I was feeling behind on catches. Uh, Spider, in my opinion, is doing excellent on in that regard. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Spider has definitely rebounded nicely from that low catch count earlier. Uh... And uh, as we mentioned, even has those fossils in his back pocket just in case. <laughs> and Pengi, just making his way through, picks up a Machop, which is always, you know, a nice thing to add to the collection. At this point, still looking for a Cubone and a Rhyhorn. Uh, whereas Spider is only looking for that Cuba. Yeah, and the Rhyhorn is uh, critically important on Eevee version because there isn't a ride Pokemon besides Rhyhorn that you can get uh, for quite a while. So having that extra speed boost as you're walking around is uh, can make a big difference uh, in addition to using Rhyhorn in some of the upcoming battles. Mm -hmm. Yeah, finds the Cubone right away, which is honestly a really great pickup. Uh, Cubone, you know, 
is one of the Pokemon we're going to hold on to and evolve, and our runners have about the same catch count. And he just knows Spider Rat sped that Kadabra, so he must be I mean, working with pretty good speed. <laughs> Level 27 Krabby, jeez. <laughs> That's yeah. ridiculous. Getting uh, a possible Kingler out <laughs> before exiting Rock Tunnel is not something you frequently see. Nope. Uh, as we mentioned before, when we were talking about the Repel, uh, this is another place where I, you know, can find it beneficial if you do wrap up all of your um, rock tunnel catches, you know, fairly early or maybe midway through the tunnel, having that repel to kind of uh, let you just breeze through and not worry about random encounters can be beneficial. Mm -hmm. And Spider uh, electing to just let the repel wear off, we're getting into a section where we'll be in towns and other places where I don't really spawn nearly as much. Yeah, not going to need the lore um, for, you know, the last few, you know, not worth wasting one for the last few steps of Rock Tunnel. Exactly. So we were looking for faint. There was a faint for that Meowth. I'm kidding. Of course. <laughs> That's not the one we're talking about. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not sure if that's going to qualify for a bounty. Confirmed. Paint is a move in the game. Oh, I was about to say, Pengi, you know, opting not to catch the Onyx, but uh, he already has one, so he doesn't need to worry about that. Yeah, the, tr the, the true MVP doesn't need to double down. Yes. Uh, trips over another Cuban, though. Uh, yeah. They are just kind of annoyingly underfoot in this rock tunnel for Pengi. Still waiting on that Rhyhorn and getting close to the end of the route, or of the tunnel itself. Um, meanwhile, Spider heading into Pokemon Tower and going to do the next rival fight. <laughs> and so as we saw with that... Oh yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I was just going to say, so... If you don't see Rhyhorn on Eevee, what do you do? Um, well, for one, you walk. <laughs> um, you There are no ride Pokemon that you can, you know, there are no ride Pokemon that are faster than walking that you can acquire before um, Rapidash. So um, nothing in the overworld that you can do that's very helpful. Uh, in battles, there are some backups. Uh, like we talked about, there are some Nidoking strats that you can use. Um, Another backup is using Graveler um, as your partner Pokemon. Um, just had it using it basically to absorb damage and buff EV for a couple of fights. Um, as well as, you know, in a pinch you can do some boom strats to self-destruct on things. Um, but, yeah, Rhyhorn can be... Uh, not getting one can definitely lose you uh, minutes on your run. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, chat, I need your help manifesting a Rhyhorn for Pengi. Yeah, only has, I believe, one more trainer fight before uh, the exit, so it is getting close. Oh, and something we didn't mention, Pengi also uh, hit level 28, so he does have double edge now. Um, which is uh, a 120 power normal move um, that deals recoil. Um, so it's very powerful. Uh, use it to replace headbutts, and uh, you can do some strats where you will skip some X attacks uh, and just use double edge. It does require a little bit more healing, um, understandably, because you are taking recoil damage, but uh, Having double edge can save you a few turns and uh, make uh, rock tunnel and rocket hideout both move uh, much quicker. Mm -hmm. uh, 
Yeah, let's see, I was focusing on Pengi, but I assume Spider had no problems with the rival fight. And let's see. Ooh, looks, yeah, looks like, like he is going to do Needle King strats. <sighs> so the nice thing about Needle King strats is that you do not have to worry about uh, metronome trolling you. You just give yes. that Clefairy a one-way ticket straight to the Shadow Realm. Uh, I think the last the last Clefairy move I saw metronome was Guillotine, and it did hit, and it was not fun. <laughs> um, ooh, Pengi getting the rare charge, so just adding even more to his catch count. Mm -hmm. um, what are some fun metronome moves you've seen from Clefairy? So, as a Pika runner, <laughs> none. <laughs> uh, very rarely do I even see Metronome. Fair, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, as we'll see with Spider, uh, when you are on Pika version or you're doing Nido King strats on Eevee, I will just poison jab this Clefairy and take out in one shot. Um, so, uh, no sh shenanigans, just uh, take it out nice and easy and you don't have to worry about status moves or one-hit KOs or anything like that that can uh, put a damper on your run. Unrelatedly, thank you, chat. Pengi, at the last possible minute, has found his Rhyhorn. Let's go. Better late than never. Ooh, and almost got that Kingler before the <laughs> exiting tunnel. See, so um, both runners with an equal catch count at the moment. Uh, although it looks like Pengi has a few more things that he's evolving in his party. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and Spider is technically ahead in the foot race, but you know there's still plenty of room. Uh, for things to move back and forth in this uh, bit of jockeying for position. Definitely. And uh, the next section, uh, as we see Spider uh, stumbling upon a Jigglypuff and just uh, snagging that real quickly for a free catch, um, the next section is Rocket Hideout, which uh, can be real, um, can turn the tide over run very quickly, uh, mm -hmm. depending on. Um, Especially if you're using Nidoking King strats, you're relying on a wild Pokemon, so you don't know what its IVs are going to be like. Um, you know, this could be a minus attack Nidoking King and, um, you know, really add extra turns to uh, these fights. Or um, could be just a really busted Nidoking King and just save a bunch of turns. Um, so it's somewhat up to chance and... Yeah, we will have to see how it goes and see if Pengi can make up some ground um, while uh, in the hideout. Yeah, uh, Spider is now in Celadon in the Pokemon Center doing the two major things you need to do here. Uh, the first one is get the lesser of the two move names, uh, Glitzy Glow, a psychic type attack for Eevee that also puts up a light screen as well as talking to the medium there in the corner to synchronize the nature of all Pokemon we'll be seeing for the rest of the run. Um, it lasts for the rest of the day on your Switch clock, which is really convenient because we've already wanted to switch over to a new day about an hour ago. Yes, uh, another reason why uh, we will, we set that time is to make sure there's no doubt that we will be uh, getting the nature we set for uh, for the star game. No, Spider did not teach the move with the greatest name of all time. Uh, he did not, though uh, he, if you are interested, uh, he did route it into his kick by Koga runs. He did route in Batty Bad. So if you want to look back on some of those runs or keep an eye on his stream, you will get to see some Batty Bad action. Or pick up the run yourself. Yes, that too. I believe it's 
yeah, he, uh, well, it'll be a little bit different because you're doing peak of versus Eevee, but it should be uh, a viable route on either version. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like, I might be a Pikachu stan, but at the end of the day, there is a single measure that Eevee captures by Harden more than Pika does, and that is baddie bad. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's, uh... Pika has some good moves, too. There's, uh... Mm -hmm. Splishy Zippy Slash. And, uh, Zippy Zap. Yeah. Um, I mean, there's yeah. some moves that aren't used during the run that's, uh... have fun names, but, yeah, it's kind of hard to t t hard to top Batty Bad. Yeah. Uh, Sp Splishy Splash, you know, would be an incredible move. It's 90 base power, 30% paralyzing, and you can't get it until Future City, so you've already gotten rid of it anyway. <laughs> also, according to Bulbapedia, it might, just maybe, it might be a reference to Surfing Pikachu? Might be. <laughs> hmm. Uh... And I guess Floaty Fall might be a reference to Balloon Flying Pikachu. That said, that is not... Uh, the, the reference to Flying Pikachu is not listed on Bulbapedia. Well, um... Maybe we can do some editing on our own and uh, fill in the gaps. Yeah, anyone with a Bulbapedia account want to add that one in there? Anyway, uh, we have Pengi on the Clefairy, uh, hitting double edge Ooh. and barely missing the range. I don't know if I've seen that before, of double edge missing, not one hit uh, hitting the Clefairy, but uh, good to know for the future. Mm -hmm. uh, luckily, it didn't take, uh, I didn't see what move the Clefairy used, but it was... Uh, not too detrimental, so didn't face any repercussions. Uh, so I did catch it. It was Constrict, oh. <laughs> which, like you said, lol. Uh, and also, <laughs> Lamau. <laughs> One of the better moves you could probably get from uh, that Clefairy, which I For believe sure. only uses Gen 1 moves. Um, I think I'd have to I think it only uses original Gen 1 moves in its metronome pool. I'm, like, moderately confident of that. You know, I would not be surprised. And, like, there's enough Gen 1 moves that are still in the game that have, you know, radically different strats. Uh, like, for instance, uh, Bite suddenly being a Dark-type move. So it's entirely possible. Yeah, I was trying to think if there's any, if I've ever seen it use a move that's not a Gen 1 move, and I don't think so. Mm -hmm. All right, Pengi okay. doing his sync. So yeah, uh, Bulbapedia supports your comment. All right. It's a nice little callback. Oh yeah, um, Spider standing on the chair. Don't do this at home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. OSHA. I can't believe Twitch is letting us put things on here that are not safe for the workplace environment. Nobody tell what me. The, yeah, what would the kids say? <laughs> I assume this stream is, you know, uh, properly uh, has that mature content warning on it, so mm -hmm, that mm -hmm. no one under 18 is watching. Indeed. Um, but... Getting back to, you know, the actual gameplay is the whole reason we're here. Yeah, yeah, that thing. 
<laughs> uh, we have Pengi uh, pressing the secret switch behind the poster. Don't forget it. Don't be like being not press it. I've definitely forgotten it too. <laughs> yep. Uh, we have Spider going through the uh, slide tile maze, uh, making their way through. Picked up an extra rare candy in here, uh, which is, I say extra, as if it isn't, you know, one of the things you 100% of the time pick up. And yeah, and then Spider, after this elevator, will be facing the kind of boss gauntlet at, uh, in Rocket Hideout, where it'll be the double battle versus Jesse and James, and then the Archer 1 fights and the Geo 1 fights. Yeah, we'll see uh, what strats Spider's going for. I missed uh, while having my nose deep, deep in the bowels of Volvopedia. Uh, <laughs> I didn't notice uh, what Spider, who Spider's current partner Pokemon is, but it looks like uh, it is the Ditto King. Yes, and has kept the Eevee in slot two. Um, was curious if he might use the Rhyhorn in slot two, um, but he is going to buff up the Eevee. Um, this is a uh, at this point, you're using special attack moves, so um, we'll have a little bit better success than, uh, and that minus attack nature won't impact him as much. Um, but getting the lair on turn one on Eevee, not great. It goes for the Paralyzed Heal, um, and a Bouncy Bubble to just heal up after it gets double targeted. Oof. And that Bouncy Bubble coming in handy, making Make sure that Eevee isn't going to die from poison damage. Yeah. And let's see, probably going to double, yep. Uh, go to plus four on Eevee to Glitzy Glow, the Weezing, and take it out, and then probably uh, just menu heal after this fight's done. Mm -hmm. Which, on the one hand, you know, menu healing is always rough. On the other hand, you do have to use two healing items here, both the potion for raw HP healing as well as an antidote to get rid of the poison. So it's not like you'd be able to skip going into uh, the menu here anyway. Yeah, and Spider going to take this opportunity to deposit some Pokemon as well. Uh, Nato King has fulfilled its purpose. Um, and yeah, like you said, if, uh, if Eevee was just dealing with one of those afflictions of either low HP or a status ailment, um, you could get by healing it in the next battle, but with both of them, you definitely want to, uh, play it safe and, uh, heal up before the archer fight, because even though we are going to be two controlling, uh, this fight, um, the Weezing can hit pretty hard and is pretty bulky, so, uh, it will take a lot of take a little while to take out. And speaking of things getting hit hard, um, Hengi's Eevee unfortunately took uh, a KO uh, in the Rocket Grunt right before uh, the uh, Lift Key Room. Mm -hmm. So had to take the moment, pull out the old Revive, and heal the uh, heal Eevee up real quick before the Scrammer fight. Um, I didn't see specifically, but I assume uh, that's somewhat the risky play with doing double-edged strats is that you are going to be going lower on HP. Um, typically for that fight, you would double-edge both of those Pokemon. Um, but if you miss the range or if you're just, you know, the Rattata has Sucker Punch and the Volt Orb can outspeed you, um, there are some opportunities where having that low HP can bite you. Mm -hmm. But even then, uh, Pengi is good enough on experience for this section that even if Eevee missed out on a little bit of experience from uh, either or both of those Pokemon, um, should still be in a great place for the boss gauntlet that's uh, just about to come up as Spider takes a moment to heal their Eevee back to full before going on to face the boss of Team Rocket, Don Giovanni. Yeah, 
and uh, this fight looks, looks pretty different uh, between the Eevee and Pika versions. Um, as we'll see, uh, one controller it on Eevee, whereas I think on Pika you typically two controller this, is that correct? Yes, you typically uh, two controller it and then get your Eevee up to uh, plus six. Yes, whereas here we will just be going up to plus two. Ooh, slash turn one is not great. Um, but what we typically do is burn uh, the Persian to kind of limit its damage output. And then ooh, going for a bouncy bubble. It's an interesting strap, but uh, I can see it. Yeah, especially hanging on. <laughs> yeah, might want to heal. Um, but he's good. Well, uh, he was thinking about going for it, but yeah, I think uh, even with a burn, Slash can still do quite a bit of damage and is a high crit move. Yeah, and even with the burn, that crit is still going to be nasty. Yes. So, uh, not too atypical Persian. Uh, you know, ideally you two-shot it, but, uh, you know, it's, you know, things can happen like that. You can take a lot of damage easily. And luckily we use the Rhyhorn to refill our HP by just bouncing doubling at once. And so we are all set for the next fight in Pokemon Tower. Yep. As Pengy has made his way down to the bottom floor and is about to start uh, the J&J &J fight. So let's so, see what uh, lineup Pengi is having. I assume it's going to be the Eevee and the Rhyhorn? Yep. Yes. Uh, so you can play around with this a little bit, depending on what your stats look like. Uh, if you have a good Eevee or a typical Eevee, you'll you know just go to plus four. And um, as you saw Spider do, um, Glitzy Glow and Bouncy Bubble the Arbok, and then just Glitzy Glow the Weezing. Uh, but there is some flexibility if your EV is really suffering. Maybe it's minus special attack that you can uh, buff up the Rhyhorn and use some drill run strats as well. Mm -hmm. uh, Spider uh, deciding to not go for the Ultra Balls in the hideout uh, has six catches left and probably feels that with the five you get earlier in Rock Tuttle from a Trader as well as the three behind the final trainer you fight before the top of the Pokemon Tower, uh, that they're good enough on Ultra Balls for the rest of the run. It'll be interesting to see if... I saw he did lure for Pokemon Tower, um, so he was looking for both, uh, or at least one of either Ghastly or Cubone. Um, Pokemon Tower is kind of notorious that there's not a lot of space uh, on each level for Pokemon to spawn. And you're also going through each level pretty quickly. So there's not a lot of, you're not giving the Pokemon a lot of time to show up. So it is kind of a, a crapshoot to see if you do get something to, uh, to appear. But hopefully one or the other does show up by the time uh, Spider is ready to exit. Yeah. And in Spider's uh, catch routing, they do have 52 out of 50 currently planned, so as long as they see one of the two, uh, they don't have to go and start digging around for backup Pokemon. Oops, I'm getting a ghastly. <laughs> not a bad Pokemon to spawn basically on your face. Nope, not at all. And get in the nap it just to make sure, yeah, they can do that. Can Sometimes the Ghastly likes to just stay in one place, and sometimes it likes to uh, roam around the screen. Uh, but I did notice he did go for the double grade instead of the ultra grade. Mm. He does get the breakout. Yeah, did not uh, get any... I, I think the first one missed the ring and the second one was in the largest possible ring. So not getting any boat, uh, excellent or great bonuses to the catch. 
Yeah, I know for if you do do the ultra great, uh, ultra ball great ball on this ghastly, even if you miss the circle, it is a pretty high chance to get in. So uh, taking a bit of a risk with doing the double great instead. But the third try is the charm. Yep. And the XP doesn't matter too much um, on these catches. Uh, Eevee's only going to be used for a couple more fights. And uh, the Pokemon that you have in your party are going to have plenty of opportunity to get more experience to evolve. Uh, so right now it's just uh, kind of just getting some catches just for the catch number. Yeah. And honestly, um, until you pick up your uh, Staryu, it... I'd argue it literally doesn't matter because you'll have enough XP to make it to the end. The only, the only thing that you'd even really be considering is whether or not you're going to rare candy your horse. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, Pengi taking care of the Persian, the hardest, ooh, decided to double-edge the Persian, which is a little risky, <laughs> just barely hung out HP-wise. Um, but uh, like before, uh, should be able to bouncy bubble and uh, recover nicely. Mm -hmm. uh, Pengi might be feeling a little bit behind and trying to make up uh, some time where he can. Mm -hmm. yeah, spider yeah. electing not to go for that hyper potion in the back of the room here before this cutscene. Uh, probably still feeling fine on healing items. Neither rudder really seems to be in a bad place with regard to super potion count. Yeah, uh, they should be okay. I, the Hyper Potion can be beneficial, um, especially when it comes to the next Archer fights a little later on down the road, um, where it is possible to take a lot of damage from, say, a Thunderbolt, and you can quickly burn through some Super Potions. So just having that extra uh, healing item and Hyper Potion at that can be uh, a nice perk, and it mm -hmm. only takes a second or two to pick up. Yeah. I, I suppose it does throw off your uh, bag order a little bit, which can be quite important. Um, the way sl items slot into your bag and you're trying to access them during battle and trying to get... It, people are very particular and want things to be e as easily accessible as possible and want things to be where they know they're going to be. So sometimes picking up an extra item that you would no not normally pick up can kind of mess with that flow. Yeah, on the other hand, if you're already scuffed enough as it is, at a certain point it's just like, well, you know, it can't get any worse. True. <laughs> <laughs> so it really depends on, you know, what items you've used and how practiced you are with... Ooh, nice power of love on Spider's side. Yeah, getting that... I believe that was a paralysis. Getting that uh, breakout was nice. Uh, hopefully to secure the three turn on this fight. And an unnecessary Rhyhorn level up. And there's the Kingler for Spider. Unnecessary Rhyhorn level up is my new Tumblr account. <laughs> I think it said five Super Potions for Spider, if I'm not mistaken. So, That's... in a solid place. Yeah. It's not the worst, you know, obviously you could do better, but... Yeah. You could do way worse. Yeah. I've come out of this fight with nothing before. Oof. Yeah, I had some moments in Rock Tunnel and Rocket Hideout. Yeah, and I'm not... Uh, I've never tried early Vermilion Shop, so I don't know how those strats work. <laughs> well, I sort of know how they work, but... Uh... That might be something runners might be more 
up to date on than me, <laughs> you know, in case of, you know, emergency situation. Um, that is kind of a strat you can employ if you do, do run out of super potions early and need some healing items that you uh, purchase them in Vermilion uh, before you would normally purchase the hyper potions and saffron. Yeah, I've seen uh, at least one runner do the early Vermilion shop as I am just going to buy um, five super potions in Vermilion and just keep going on to surge. Yep, also viable. Just uh, get some to get by and just take the time loss. <laughs> Hengi going right. for the 1C Ghastly. All right. All right, I'm we got running it. a little low on ultras, but I think looking at his catch count, he's probably fine. Um, and as we saw for uh, Spider, depositing the EV uh, will remain on our head for the rest of the run, but will not be used in battle any longer. Um, we'll be officially switching to the Star Me um, after this next catching section and moving forward with that for the rest of the run. So at this point, do you think it's kind of like a Ratatouille situation going on here? <laughs> uh controlling through the hats uh it's possible uh yeah i'm just trying to imagine if the eevee's the real one uh taking you to the elite four <laughs> <laughs> why be nothing without it? them yeah why do you think you got isekai through the tv that is true this eevee is does have some supernatural powers <laughs> the eevee here is the mastermind pulling all of the strings or something. I don't know. I'm really bad at figuring out how to creepy pasta, so don't mind me. <laughs> no, no, I was getting it. I was getting the vibes. Oh yeah. Um. Let's see. A spider running away from the Snorlax, uh, using that ghost post Pokemon for a guaranteed runaway, and uh, heading on to routes. That? Sorry. Go ahead. I was going to say, uh, Seizito Duo at the last possible second mm -hmm. and just keeps going. Might not have had time to react or might not have wanted to go all the way back through the cut bush, etc. Yeah, you can catch some Pokemon up there, um, especially since you should be already lured. And um, yeah, um, but you do have to take the time to cut the bush and it is bailed out with a the Doduo. They're fairly common enough on this route anyway, so uh, no real harm. And a Ponita. Always nice to see that as quick as possible. Mm -hmm. Alright, Pengi now on uh, his last Eevee fight. Uh, looking to also get the three turn. And getting pretty much the same as Spider minus the Power of Love, not kicking in. According to rumors, though, it is a curious thing. Yeah, I didn't like that one either. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> um... <laughs> Unfortunately, Pengi's Rhyhorn going down got crit by the Weezing, so I'm gonna have to ad lib a little bit. Yeah, luckily at this stage of the fight, it should just be uh, X special the EV and call it a day. Yeah. So taking a look at Spider's uh, tracker, we're looking at, uh, they've settled on their 50 that they're going to go for. So they just need Psyduck on this route and 
star you on the next route and then the coughing in mansion so three more catches and they got it all wrapped up and if for whatever reason they don't see a duck on this route there's always the possibility of either going for a tentacle or reviving your fossil depending on how you're feeling in theory the tentacle is faster but you know it is still a spawn whereas the fossil is still in your back pocket uh, should you want it. Or just go for, like, Tangela and Magmar. You know, <laughs> I do hear Magmar Fire Punch strats are growing in popularity, <laughs> so not necessarily the worst call. <laughs> don't go for Magmar strats if you don't need to. Please. Yeah, definitely don't. not. I think every time I tried to catch Magmar, I I mean, I needed it because I was desperate, but I did regret going for it. <laughs> okay, okay, but it, if we really want to cook, hear me out on this one. Okay. Uh, Tangela, mm -hmm. Victory Bell, mm. Ditto, and Mansion Chansey. Sounds like a foolproof plan. All red circles. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that sounds like a speedrun category. <laughs> Only go for the hardest catches. Oh, yeah. Or reverse uh, catch order. <laughs> <laughs> a spider, on the other hand, finding the duck does not need to do anything fun. Yeah, Psyduck, always a good catch on this route. Uh, only needs one level to get to Golduck. Uh, and unlike some of the other catches you might have, like uh, the Tentacle or the Coughing, uh, it's not a slow EXP curve, so uh, mm -hmm. it is most assuredly going to reach that next level pretty quickly. Uh, Pengi uh, opting to ignore the Big Rat and the Doduo behind the Cut Push as well. Um... It's definitely something I've seen uh, runners going for uh, recently, though it might be an older strap that might be just regaining in popularity. I'm not sure. I haven't really been... Oh my god, that beauty is blind. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, most of these trainers have about one tile of vision, so you can get pretty close to them without uh, them spotting you. Yeah, I was about to have a gosh dang heart attack there. <laughs> yeah, I've definitely seen some runners throughout this tournament take a, an extra safe route. Pengi doing another one controller catch. Um, I'm actually does starting to wonder if Pengi doesn't know that you can summon the support trainer in the catch. Mm, that's possible. Like, that's not a mechanic yeah. the game teaches you. No, and I've definitely seen other runners uh, that, you know, d didn't know that if they're, you mm -hmm. know, when they're starting out. Um, but it does summon the second one now for the Rapidash. Yeah. Is... I'm actually starting to get worried about his Ultra Ball count, because I think he's down to two, and he still has three more catches planned. Let's see... So is the tentacle, the star you, and the coughing planned? I mean, it's doable. I mean, you definitely want to have, ideally, the ultra ball for the tentacle and the star you, since those have to be one controller catches. Um, I I don't know the rates, but I feel like a double great coughing is doable. Um, it does. Yeah. It's not gonna. It has a fairly. Uh, expected pattern when it's moving around so you can, you know, get that excellent uh, usually pretty easily. Mm -hmm. And I, it's probably not that bad if you have the Silver Razzes. Right. Um, especially compared to like, just do an Ultra Great without Razzing. Alright, Spider. Time. I'm getting that star. Let's see the number that doesn't matter. 
above 10, average. Yeah, 1073. Um, so, you know, that's going to be slightly above a average stats on average. Which so, that could mean anything. Yeah. So the way that the CP value is calculated is it's basically a function that adds up all of the Pokemon stats um, to kind of provide one number to compare how powerful any two Pokemon are. It's okay at best at doing that, but the important thing is that uh, we've locked it down that star's nature. There aren't any AVs to worry about yet. The only variables that go into determining that number right now are the IVs of the star. So it does give us a metric for what the ranges of those IVs can be. But it is, you know, still at the end of the day, a crapshoot for whether or not those numbers are put in the right stats. Right. Um, so this could have great attack, which would be not helpful. Um, or it could have great special attack and speed, which is the two main categories we're looking for. Yeah. Um, obviously, uh, after you've got great special attack and speed, anything left over that goes into your defenses you're never upset about. But obviously we want to outspeed things and uh, explode them if possible. All right, uh, Pengi getting there. Uh... Surfy Surf? Sea Skim? Um, it's, it's Surfy Surf. Surfy Surf. Except when I've misnamed all of the other moves, in which case I will call it Sea Skim. Um, at the very least, we can all agree that the next one is Pushy Push. Yeah. Like, I don't know why they didn't call it that. If that's just what it should have been. Yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, now it's time for Pengi to go uh, do the water catching. Um, we alluded to this briefly, but we didn't really talk about it in any depth. Uh, the way that the water routes work is you're on the surfboard, so you can't actually summon the second con uh, controller while you're on the water. And I th think 85 at 45 is a good special attack. Uh, that's decent, yeah. I think it's yeah. actually pretty good. Um, yeah, like, I don't actually know what the range there is. Let's see. And the speed is good as well. You know, love to see the 90s. Um, so yeah, I think that's a pretty, you know, above average, like, not elite, but very good start. Yeah. That is a star that you're happy to get. Yeah, definitely. All right, and teaching Scald, which will be an important move uh, for pretty much the remainder of the run. Um, I, didn't, I didn't catch the evolved special attack, but we're at 124 speed, so that basically means you don't need to worry about outspeeding anything at this point. Mm -hmm. And one difference um, for, I know, the, between the EV version and peak version is that uh, because you have one starter, the rival, obviously has the, the other starter, so it is possible to outspeed the Raichu um, on the rival 5 fight, the Viridian rival fight. So if the spider does hit 140 speed by that time, that can save a, an X speed on that fight, which is a nice perk. Um, but yeah. other than that, uh, should be uh, just comfortable with all other speed thresholds of, um, and be able to play things pretty standardly. 
yeah, at the end of the day, the big speed threshold we're really worried about it in this run is getting a 118 speed going into Blaine. Mm -hmm. uh, because that allows you to outspeed all of Blaine's Pokémon. And other than that, we really don't have to worry about any uh, speed tiers, because either we're just going to outspeed, or uh, we're in a position where we are setting up X speeds anyway. Uh, Pengi right. electing to use the rare candies on the surfing route, uh, which oh, go ahead is unfortunately going to, uh, due to a weird and not very well known mechanic in Pokemon Let's Go, going to give the Star Star you extra friendship because it, you're doing this menu on the route where you caught it. And will that be enough extra friendship to potentially have Bruno turn around? Um, oh, uh, chat say, saying that that's a myth. Okay. Fair. Um, Tangi also did use a fourth uh, rare candy. So with that, um, we still <laughs> might be seeing those Bruno turnarounds uh, if uh, Pengi uses another rare candy later. That's true, because uh, he did catch the Rapidash, so had that extra rare candy that you would normally use on a Ponytail. Mm -hmm. um, and it looks like uh, has a uh, very good special attack uh, and still very good speed, if uh, a little bit lower than Spiders. Yeah. I don't know where I heard it. I just remember someone telling me that, and I believed them. I've definitely heard it before as well, and I wasn't sure yeah. if it was true or not. It is useful to know that it is in fact misinformation. Um, though, depending on... Uh, though, if, if that is not true, the only reason to hold off on... Uh, doing that menu is if you think you're going to get enough experience to potentially get a level, I guess, um, from catches and such. Or if you are waiting for a window to do a menu for whatever reason. All right, Pengi getting the excellence and the double greats on the coffin. And catches it no problem. And that should be their last catch. So ah, both yeah. are stone. And if you do the menu after mansion catches and you have a repel, you can use it then. True. Uh, but it is something I've seen a few other runners do is, uh, you know, just take care of the Starmie uh, evolution and candies as, as quick as possible, just so you don't forget. Um, and that way you can kind of just run into mansion unimpeded. Um, I like to do it right as I enter mansion, mansion personally, so that I can, uh, like you said, you can get some added EXP, but if you also you evolve early, or you know, do the evolution at that time, and say you're going to catch a coughing, you could get that little added EXP to your Starmie instead of um, the star you. Yeah. As with all things, there are a little bit of interesting things you can do, and Pengi getting trolled by the Magmar guarding the statue. Yeah, not much you could do about that. Yeah. Yeah, the Magmars, the, the rats, uh, there are lots of things in this uh, area that can roam around and just make life difficult. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, Pengi in the fight with Scientist Ted, who has who leads with an Electrode, and I have to say, if anyone Pokemon is a nemesis to our runners, um, first place at this point is probably Jinx. <laughs> uh, shout out to Ace Trainer Caroline. Um, but second place is probably Electrode, um, because it's one of the few Pokemon that's just natively faster than Starmie. 
And if the Thunderbolt paralyzes you, you could be put in a really bad spot. Yeah. Uh, at risk of this, of jinxing myself. I haven't had that happen on Ted yet in my in my runs, but I'm sure it will come one day where I do get that paralysis. And uh, yeah, there is not a lot you can do um, other than pray it doesn't hit you again. Yep. And we will be seeing another troublesome electrode a little later on in Sylph. Yeah. Contributing oh. one of many reasons to Bad Archer being bad. Yes. Hopefully we will not see a third electrode in Victory Road. We all, we all know Colby Skip is the most dangerous, yet <laughs> risky strat. In the, I can't actually do the bit. <laughs> Um, as it turns out, uh, talking to traders or objects in this run can be a little bit finicky at times. And in Victory Road, there's a pair of traders who are right next to each other. And there is a now infamous video in the community of someone very clearly talking to the one you're supposed to. And the other trainer is responding. Yeah, it, that's still baffles me how I mean I know there's been some weird occasions where I've you know talked to a trainer you know when I was clearly like a whole you know five in-game steps like away from them um, and because of that I just take all of those extra extra safe just to make sure I'm not uh accidentally having one of those moments, especially that um, the fisherman on the island with the water stone. Mm -hmm. I always get to the very edge of the water and making sure I'm facing away from them as much as possible just to not accident and accidentally talk to them. Yeah, and I have messed up talking to that second trash can that we saw mm -hmm. Spider talking to in Surge's gym before. Uh, long enough ago that I'm starting to get a little risky with it, but it's going to come back to bite me, mark my words. Yeah, and if even you take the inside a little bit too much in between the first and the second can, that uh, trainer on the left can see you. Uh, it's, it's a vision, and the areas are a little bit tighter in this gym than uh, you might let on um, from a casual view. Yeah, but both of our runners in two different gyms at the same time now uh, Peggy taking on the third gym leader, Blaine. Uh, Spider taking on the fourth gym leader, Lieutenant Surge. Correct. Correct. Um, and we're kind of in a bit of a uh, boss rush portion of the run. And really, we've moved on to basically the second phase of the run. Now that we're, uh, we have our Starmie. We're going through, we're getting our eight badges, we're done with catches. All we have left are Evos and Gift Pokemon. Yes, so we'll be getting two Gift Pokemon, uh, the Lapras and Porygon that you see marked on each runner's charts, um, trackers, and uh, those will be the last Pokemon that we pick up, um, assuming nothing is uh, evolving during the Sabrina fight, which can happen occasionally. Mm -hmm. um, and I believe, let's see, both owners have nine tails marked, so they'll be using the Firestone on that. Uh, pretty common. Um, usually runners will kind of flex that as the last option if you do have an odd number of um, catches that nine tails can kind of wrap it up into that nice even 50. Yeah, it, it is still a little bit of a pain because you do have to go into the box, pull the Vulpix out, and then put the nine tails back pretty much right away because you don't want to get all the extra levels on it since it's mm -hmm. so underleveled compared to where you're at. Yeah, typically your Vulpix is going to be about level 17, so if you keep it in your party any longer, you're going to get lots of level ups. Mm -hmm. um, so even though we're not fighting even though the trainer battles, as we mentioned, don't give uh, too much EXP compared to maybe other games um, in the franchise, we're still going to be fighting pretty high-level Pokemon uh, 
and trainers coming up in this section, so uh, I have made that Nine Tails mistake and thought, oh, it'll be fine, and it was not fine. <laughs> Six levels later, you're like, oh. Yeah. Yeah. Um, All right. Despite her entering Erica's gym and going to try to pass the most difficult gym challenge. Mm hmm. Do you have a cute Pokemon? Spoiler literally every Pokemon in the game counts as cute. Yeah, the ja challenges in this game are either. Uh, they're pretty 50 50. They're either very strict or trivial. <laughs> Something that you would like, you know, there are some gyms you like literally cannot get into, um, such as Surge or Blaine's gym without completing the challenge. Um, yeah, uh, Erica, Giovanni being the other two that I'd say really fall into that category, whereas yeah. the other ones, uh, Brock's, you know, obviously requires you to catch your uh, plant for your virgin or get something traded over. Uh, Misty and Sabrina are level requirements of level 15 and 45, respectively. And then, of course, the infamous Koga challenge. Correct. Which seems like both runners will be comfortably uh, getting into Koga's gym if yeah. they've done their chart, if they've done their trackers correctly. Which again. You know, we've had one person get kicked by Koga in this tournament. We do not need a second. I mean, it'd be funny. True. <laughs> but, you know, I am not sure how I would react if I was, you know, in one of these tournament races and I got kicked by Koga. Yeah, it would probably not be too fun. Especially, uh, since this is a lower bracket race and um, not winning or not getting a top time in the lower bracket does mean your time in this tournament is going to be over. It's true, the stakes are high. Have you ever had any runs where you did accidentally got kicked? I have yet to get kicked by Koga. Um, I am now incredibly nervous for tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's happened to me twice. Um, once I was like, oh, I forgot to mark Ekans, but I was thinking of the run I did before, mm. like my last attempt, um, and didn't realize that until I got there. And uh, it was still fun because uh, I just ran out of fuchsia and master ball to Venonat. Um, you know, getting to use the master ball, not something you always get to do in a run. Um, yeah. and I think the only other time is I de accidentally deposited Metapod before it had evolved and did not realize until I got to Koga. <laughs> oh no. Um, yeah, luckily by the time you get there, like you mentioned, uh, the backup strat is fairly straightforward, though it does cost time. Yeah. Um, there are places like um, outside Fuchsia where you can quickly Master Ball something. Some people like to go for the Diglet if they know that they're um, going to be running uh, low on that count um, in Diglet's Cave. Um, if you do happen to have you know, an extra stone that you can use to Evo, that can be a nice backup. Um, but it can be a bit, uh, it's easy to get frazzled when you're not expecting to get, when you're pretty sure you have 50 and then you get there and you're, uh, don't know why your number isn't matching up. Yeah. But luckily I, I haven't spotted any d discrepancies, discrepancies yet, so... Uh, hopefully both of our runners are, you know, in a good spot. Um, as Spider-C goes into the blue fight, uh, we'll see which partner Pokemon uh, Spider has here. Yeah, I know he did have a Dodrio earlier for the Ted fight. I don't know if he took the Ted deal to the five fight. Uh, looks like he did. Okay, okay. 
guaranteed to have in your party um, and because it's your, you can fire blast mm -hmm. and then of course the new backup to the backup is if you catch magmar you can use fire punch uh, yeah I believe you can use fire punch or flamethrower because um, I think it comes with both so whether you have an X attack or an X special attack that you have that flexibility mm -hmm. yeah i haven't really looked into it i just have heard people talking about it yeah same uh, magmar usually not one of the pokemon you want to be catching uh, it usually means that uh, your catch count has been pretty low and it's one of the last pokemon on your route that is accessible um but it, it does come in handy in this fight uh if you do have it yeah. But now, it is time for everyone's favorite, Bad Archer. This is the only true double battle in the route, which means there are four Pokemon in the field. You are only controlling one of them, which means the AI takes like 10 seconds to compute each turn. And now we wait. All right, we got a boom. Self-destruct protect, pretty standard. All right. Critical hit, not ideal, but... Yeah, still the second best opener you could probably hope for. I guess I say it's standard. People claim it's standard. I still see Thunderbolt in my runs about 60-70% of the time. Yeah. I, you know, I, I consider it lucky if if I see self destruct. If I see Thunderbolt, yeah. that's unlucky. That that's basically my dichotomy here. Yeah, definitely. Um, having a bit of a rough time with the eradicate uh, and the wheezing. Uh, the Dark Pulse is doing a lot of damage, especially with that crit, and the Sucker Punch going into the Q bones is not looking super hot either. Yeah, this fight taking a little bit longer than you'd like. You could risk you going for the Psychic on Weezing, but then you're risking the Sucker Punch. Ops just heal for the safe play. Um, and Cubone does take care of the Eradicate, which is a nice perk. Yeah. And now you're down to a 2v1, which is a situation that is all too common in this particular run. And luckily it doesn't see the Weezing Protect. That would delay the fight even longer, so I uh, should be able to wrap it up uh, with the Skull Bat one shot. Uh, meanwhile, Pengi heading into the blue fight uh, himself with uh, Dodrio as well, so he shouldn't have any troubles. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Pengi getting a little bit closer, though, is two evolutions uh, behind Spider now. So we'll have to take the time to not only evolve the Vulpix, but also sit through another Evo here in a little bit. All right, and Spider heading up into the next Jesse and James fight. The last Jesse and James fight? Yes? Um, yes. Yeah. I had to um, stop and think for a minute. <laughs> yeah, I was just double checking. Um, unlike the other ones, which have been, uh, it can be a little bit tricky when we were working with Eevee. Um, now that we're working with Starmie, uh, it is pretty easy to take care of. 
assuming, uh, like many other fights, that you don't get paralyzed by Thunderbolt. Mm -hmm. But even that yeah. is not too detrimental here. And, you know, Starmie not only gets stab psychic, but it has significant levels on the Pokemon, whereas I believe Eevee is usually fighting at a slight disadvantage in J and J2 and 3. Uh, correct, yeah. Um, Eevee is kind of struggling to keep up uh, level-wise, only uh, ideally getting into the low thir 30s. Um, Whereas, uh, since we picked up a Starmie and kind of backtracked to kind of went ahead of where the game intended us to go to catch the Starmie, and then kind of backtracked to get back where they expected us to be. So we do uh, lo level them by about, um, you know, 10 levels or so, um, mm -hmm. making these one shots uh, guaranteed even without setup. Um, looks like uh, Pengi did get, I'm assuming, got Thunderbolt on turn one. Um, Thunderbolt, no protect. And then uh, self destruct and Cubone picking up the Raticate. So, probably the best the best turnout you can get, the uh, best outcome you can get that includes Thunderbolt turn one. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And uh, unlike the last Giovanni fight, uh, but it's kind of similar to the Justin James fight, we are still over leveled, so uh, we're just going to set up one X special attack and then sweep everything. It's relatively straightforward, uh, especially with the type advantage once we get past the Persian, uh, who doesn't really have that good of special defense to begin with. It looks like after that last fight, Spider got the last of their evolutions done. So just as the gonna pick up the gift Pokemon after this fight, and Pengi's still waiting on that coughing, um, and has that Nine Tails Evo to do. Mm -hmm. But yeah, both of them in a real good spot with their catch routes. Um, just need to finish out the rest of the run. Yeah, both uh, have been, had really clean runs. Uh, been impressed. Uh, you know, no major issues that I can think of. No optionals. Um, just a clean display. Mm -hmm. so so there is still... Oh, go ahead. Yeah, I was going to say, there, there is still, you know, a fair bit of run to go. Nothing's over till it's over. True. Very true. Uh Still some trainers could hit, some ranges you can miss. Um, although they are both equipped with pretty good stars, so that is a nice, uh, a good sign. Yeah, there's some ranges you can miss, there's some moves you can miss. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. We'll see how everyone's hydro pump accuracy is looking tonight. Yeah. It always hits eventu eventually. Usually. Most of the time. Yeah. Well, Sometimes it's... of the time, it works every time. Yeah. Sometimes it feels like 20%, but... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Look, I'm sure Pengi, as a uh, VGC player, is really familiar with Hydro Pump accuracy in this generation. True. Uh, 
Um, but Spider picking up the gift Lapras, also going to pick up the gift Porygon. Uh, going to do the uh, Saffron Shop, and then is going to go head directly into Sabrina's gym. And we'll be able to see a little bit from uh, their Saffron Shop what some of their later game strats might be, mm -hmm. uh, depending on which X items they buy. So, standard to start, the Hypers, the Max Repels. Expedefs. Okay. Interesting. So, X-Speeds are standard. Yep. Okay, this just looks like the standard uh, shop with full restores, uh, full heals. Opted not get to get the X-Defend, though. So, uh, that's... This is, for EV version, this is typically when you'd buy the X-Defend um, for the Geo fight, um, the gym right. fight. Um, so that's uh, more than likely signaling that he's going to two-controller that fight. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm, I, I'm still too used to Pika where we buy that all the way back in Pewter. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I had to remind myself as I was saying it, it's like, oh yeah, Pika has that quirk. Um, at least, you know, it seems different to us than running UV. Um, but the X special defends uh, mean that he's leaving the option open to one controller, uh, Lance and Champ. Um, whereas if you were two controlling those fights, you don't really need the X special defense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And. You know, while you're going, uh, some runners might have the stream up, might be watching, you know, where things are. Other runners are, you know, very heads down, just like, I'm going to run my own race, I'm going to play my own game. Um, I don't want that extra information mm -hmm. to guide me towards bad plays. Um, I don't know where either of our runners tonight fall in that particular spectrum. Yeah, I'm not sure. I think um, maybe if I recall Spider's first run race, they were a little more active in the chat and uh, mm -hmm. kind of contributing. But given that it's the second round and it's a little bit higher stakes, uh, they might be kind of more zoned in and just focusing on uh, what their run is. Yeah. Um, and so with that in mind, if you're not watching the race and you don't really have that information about where your opponents are relative to you uh, the gamble of whether or not to go for some of the riskier strategies is even more complicated because you don't even necessarily know whether or not you're actually behind or not mm -hmm. and honestly uh, that sort of like psychology of how to go through uh, things in a uh, speedrun race is one of just to toot my own horn a little bit is one of the most interesting things to me about the way that things work here in the speedrunning scene broadly yeah and I think that's going to be uh, just become even more prevalent the um, further we get along in this tournament and it's kind of whittled down to um, you know the skill range gets even tighter and tighter and you're really having to just uh you know take those risks and those calculated risks and figure out what's the best play of you know whether it's you want to save before the fights uh before the champ fight in case you know things go wrong or whether you kind of just gotta go full uh you know full offensive do all the risky strategies and uh yeah it's uh it's not easy decisions and uh uh, glad I'm not the one in the <laughs> in the hot seat at the moment. Yep, I'm looking forward to it. Question mark. <laughs> <laughs> uh, your race is coming up this weekend. Uh, it is, in fact, tomorrow evening. Tomorrow evening. Okay. Um, so at the end of uh, this race, we'll, we will uh, give a little preview of the upcoming races. Um, and there are, it is a jam-packed weekend, I believe. There are two races tomorrow, and one on Saturday, at least. Mm -hmm. um, 
Yeah, so... I can pull up that if we want to talk about it uh, while our runners are cleaning up uh, on their way to Koga. We have Spider doing a menu now that they're done with Sabrina. We have Pengi uh, teaching Thunderbolt on his way into Sabrina. Uh, yeah, and usually you would teach Thunderbolts a little bit earlier, but uh, Sabrina is the first opportunity that you're actually using it, so um, no real damage done. Mm -hmm. But yeah, there are actually a bunch of races this weekend. There's uh, two tomorrow, three on Saturday now. Three and, on Saturday. Yeah, and then one on Sunday. And I believe is Sunday that will be the last race of this round. Correct. So and probably immediately after that will be the draw for the next, which will be mm -hmm. its own event. Yep. All right, Spider heading into Caden. Uh, this fight's always interesting. Uh, you know, the Muck knows protect, minimize, toxic. Uh, and a moon blast, and all of those moves can uh, make you lose turns. Bag in the moon blast turn one, no special attack drop. And of course, goes for the pr turn two protect. Yep. Uh... But luckily, no minimize, so uh, no chance of it missing, and. Now the Beedrill comes out, and we'll see if that protects as well. Mm -hmm. Goes for the Scald, because at plus two, uh, that Beedrill uh, goes down even without the super effective hit. So, pretty average amount of turns, just not happened in the typical order you expected. <laughs> yep. Uh, Spider makes their way through the rest of the Invisible Maze, just fine as Pengi is making his way through Sabrina's teleporter base, getting a really sick trader pass right there. Yeah, you can play, uh, you know, a little fast and loose with these trainers, depending on how risky you want to be. Um, <laughs> they are all uh, only face two directions, so you at least know which way they're going to turn. Um, but yeah, the timing can be a little different depending on what cycle you get. Mm -hmm. All right, and Spider on Koga, we can see turn one protect is a good sign. And this fight pretty much comes down to just getting as few protects as possible. Chad is asking, how are the stars today? Um, not, like, incredible, but very viable. Yeah, I think, like you kind of mentioned earlier, both stars you'd be happy to get. Uh, so we will actually see Pengi's uh, stats. Uh, he's going to level up here shortly during the Sabrina fight, if people want to take a look. Yeah, at those level 49 stats, uh, since Pengi did elect to use uh, four rare candies earlier, and I did not see whether or not he's used a fifth before Sabrina. One thirty-five at level 49. Yeah, so definitely a good special attack. Should be able to scald uh, some things on Koga, no problem. Um, 
can serve that psychic PP a little bit. And yeah. here is the push push. Let's go. Yeah, so. I've never looked at this. Do you know what's behind to that other stone, the other boulder? It's like a nugget. I actually checked it once when I was in a weird spot. Okay. I was just, you know, I always pass by it, you know, always see it runs and never seen anyone actually check to see what's behind there. Yeah, uh, chat saying it's a nugget. Oh, okay. Wait, actually, you might pick that up in Diplo? Hmm. But it's been forever that... I just don't remember at this point. Um, but yeah, uh, looking at the notes, uh, Pengi should be able to scold everything except Koga's Buck. And Spider hit Ancient Verdian, so kind of been keeping the same pace uh, where uh, Spider's just been one gym ahead. Um, but you can still definitely... Uh, things can turn... I would say the next couple fights for both are pretty standard and mm -hmm. probably won't see a big shift. Um, but definitely when we get to the Elite Four, uh, some uh, unexpected things can happen. Yeah. And, you know, there... Is uh, Victory Road itself can be a little tricky, um, mm -hmm. because uh, between Hydro Pump misses, um, a little bit of trolling from some various traders, as well as, you know, both Alexa Skip being somewhat tricky at times, mm -hmm. um, and the potential of, you know... Uh, hitting optionals. There is still plenty of room, but I would say at this point it is kind of Spider's race to lose. Yeah. But, you know, this is, let's go, this is a Pokemon speedrun. It is not over until someone hits dot done. Very true. Uh, let's see. Uh, Pengi doing his own Caden fight. Getting the turn on Protect, which is nice. And then uh, we'll see what the Beedrill does, but currently, uh, by my tabulation, uh, Pengi hasn't wasted any turns on Caden, so we're at a good spot. Okay, there's the Protect, so that's one turn wasted in Koga's Gym. And I'll be interested to see how... Well, I assume Spider will probably play it safe on Samuel coming up out mm -hmm. after this fight. But could always go for the pump. Yeah, it, it depends on whether or not Spider knows how they're positioned relative to Pengi right now. Mm -hmm. um, if Spider knows that they're ahead then, you know, playing it safe and just slotting in the W is definitely the right call. But if Spider isn't sure where Peggy is and is feeling behind for various reasons, I don't think there's any real real reason to feel behind. Uh, we might see Spider go for some of the riskier strats, but no, there is the 2C for Caden. Oh, Samuel, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> uh, wires crossed. It, we're nearly three hours into this run, y'all. <laughs> uh, let's see. I was trying to get an estimate of what kind of pace Spider is on, and I want to say maybe like 209 is my best guess. Yeah, um... Hmm. I mean, 309, obviously, not 209. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm so bad at estimating paces, um, but what I can give you is that in my own splits, 
I finished Giovanni at about a 148, and my PB is a 315.30. Yeah, I mean, I was pretty much just doing the same thing, looking at my own yeah. splits and um, comparing and... Um, yeah, it looked like he was... Uh, I think I finished at a 41, and so... And that was a 307 run. Um, mm -hmm. But as you said, anything can happen in. Um, oh, Chad is guessing maybe you know, some varying opinions, either sub 310 or 311. Um, mm -hmm. But as you were saying, anything could happen in Victor Road and uh, the Elite Four. So definitely not over. Till it's over. <laughs> yeah, if only we had a way to put our money where our mouths are and gamble. If only. Um, Pengy getting pushy push. And Spider doing the 2C on Giovanni. And the Rapidash faints, which is what you want to happen. Yeah, this is just such a more consistent setup. I had a run not that long ago where I got two different crits while trying to set up all that uh, Doug Trio. Oh, I think I remember. I, did you clip that? Yeah, I, I posted yeah, yeah, a clip I, of that. I, yeah, I remember seeing that. <laughs> oh, it was it, it, my heart. My heart. <laughs> Yeah, it's uh, it's it feels like that Dig Trio has uh, an extra high crit rate even with you know Earthquake. Um, but yeah, just taking the small time loss for a guaranteed fight, safe fight is um, a very reliable strat, whether you are in a race or doing PB attempts. Mm -hmm. And the spider will begin the next rival fight. But first, let's revive that Rapidash. <laughs> yeah, the 2C Giovanni does uh, save you from really needing to worry about uh, Trio just critting you and ending your run. But it does lose a little bit of time between the uh, one two player turn uh, extra time if for whatever reason the Rabidash lives mm -hmm. and also the menu afterwards to heal up the Rabidash which you know takes less time than the Rabidash living at least As Pengi gets his way into Giovanni's gym, a Spider is starting their rival fight. So even though uh, both of the Pokemon are at not at full HP, uh, it should be just fine. Uh, you do have some extra turns here to um, do some healing and Rapidash's health doesn't really matter uh, particularly much as long as you're not in quick attack range mm -hmm. and yeah quick attack is the only real uh, threat to our runners here um, because we're setting up next speed so Starmie will get that times two speed bonus meaning that you'll outspeed all of your rival's Pokemon without any sort of concern Uh, it looks like Pengi setting up the one controller for uh, Samuel, so we'll see if he might be doing the pump to make up some time. 
Yo! I love it. It's going for it. Ooh, double dodge. Ooh, double dodge. <laughs> <laughs> Gets it on the... You know, it It always seems like that Megahorn hits a lot more frequently than the Hydro Pump hits, but uh, luckily, uh, Pengi got bailed out. And Spider heading into the badge checks. Not the most uh, engaging part of the run. Main difficulty here is just making sure you don't talk to Rapidash over and over. Never done that one before. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, luckily in this game, you can mash basically any face button to advance text. So... Uh, avoiding talking to Rabidash is easier than you might think. Uh, Pengi also summoning the second trainer for the Giovanni fight. So deciding that one risky strat was enough for this gem and <laughs> taking it safe on this one. Um, still understandable and uh, you know, still might be shooting for um, you know, that solid time, even if uh, he's still a little behind in the, the race, you can still put up a solid time to get into the next round. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because we're still in the stage of the tournament where um, even if you don't win, a small number of runners will still uh, survive on time. Um, in particular, uh, two runners uh, from the lower bracket will stay in the tournament. Uh, currently, uh, those times are a 3.14 and a 3.37, uh, though we this is the third uh, lower bracket race. Yeah, and Hengi's still on a good pace to put up a solid time. Um... Definitely above that 337, uh, assuming everything goes according to plan. So, mm -hmm. uh, and we will just have to wait to see how those uh, other races play out in this, like we mentioned, jam packed weekend. Indeed. Especially because, you know, we've already seen a number of upsets over the course of this round alone, and we have a number of races to go. Uh, down here. Um, and as chat pointed out, Spider is in contention for the current top uh, lower bracket time, as well as potentially the top lower bracket time for round two. Mm. Um, depending on how, you know, everything else plays out. And just to quickly point out in that last spider fight, it looked like uh, on the Kangaskhan fights that he did not he hit the pump but missed the range. And then Kangaskhan, I believe, took out the Rapidash. Uh, so it may have looked like he was one controller range, but I believe that was a two controller uh, where just the Rapidash died. Uh, so luckily not punished too hard. And if anything, it saves a little extra text since uh, you won't get those Rapidash level ups, or you know, your partner gained it, your the other Pokemon in your party gained an experience text. Mm -hmm. And we'll have Rapidash back up and ready to go once we talk to uh, the cop down here in the cave. And Pengi taking on Rival 5. I believe it. Now I'm second, I guess. Second guessing myself it is, if it is Rival 5. But Viridian Rival. <laughs> and should look pretty similar to the same fight uh, Spider just had. Yeah. Honestly, 
it, it's weird to me because, you know, there is the earlier rival fight here that we don't do, but technically that would be the second one. Mm -hmm. So, like, you know, this is just Viridian Rival. It, it's easier just to give them names rather than figure out which number it is. I can't count past four anyway. <laughs> yeah, if you say Viridian Rival, everyone will know you mean the, mm -hmm. the post-Geo one. All right, Spider successfully pushed some blocks. I, I know that he has had some trouble with that, <laughs> accidentally pushing that block in the corner a few times. Uh, so makes it out uh, just fine this time and is going to do the Alexa skip. Mm -hmm. No problem. Makes it look easy. Mm-hmm. And I don't know. That was, after seeing the Colby clip, that was a little close for comfort. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but does uh, talk to the right trainer. Um, while this Jinx is annoying to fight, uh, between uh, Lovely Kiss putting you to sleep, Ice Beam having the potential to freeze you, it is still better than the other trainer who uh, leads with Electrode. Yes. Um, yes, Caroline's Jinx is annoying, but not necessarily dangerous. Oh, got the freeze. I haven't seen that in a while. Yeah, but... and fun fact, Scald is a defrosting move. And I don't believe the... Well, I assume nothing else in our party has a priority move, so Spider should be okay to finish out this fight before healing. Mm-hmm. Uh, but he is going to heal just to be safe. Not sure if this might th might have thought this gold bat might have quick attack. Yeah. Like, I don't hate Spider trying to play it safe here. Oh, yeah. And now just one more trainer remaining for Victory Road. Yep. Um, but we're not allowed to skip Dawson, unfortunately. No. Uh, Dawson, the uh, first trainer that people found the mount skips for, uh, albeit unintentionally. Uh, and it was previously thought that that was the only trainer you could skip um, using the mounts and that it had something to do with the geometry of the you know the landscape and the rocks um but it turns out that all of these trainers you can skip on your rapid ash if you make very precise movements um, that uh, are very difficult to do on normal joy cons and only a couple of people have actually completed runs with them mm -hmm. All right, uh, Pengi on the Kangaskhan, hitting the Hydro Pump, first try, no problem, and hits the range. Easy. Just hit your ranges. It's just that easy. Or with his special attack, it might not even be a range. I'm not positive. <laughs> I'd have to check. I don't even know what his special attack is at this point. Yeah. But uh, yeah, Spider might need to be careful here. It's that low HP and this Blastoise does have Aqua Jet. Yeah, looking at the notes, Aqua Jet does like 12 damage at worst. So, oh, okay. um, and that's with minimum defense, but going for the heal, playing it safe, playing around the crit. And he would have needed to heal anyway, so, you know, not really punished for healing in battle when you don't get hit. Yeah, especially with a Hydro Pump miss there, that was, you know, 
exceptionally fortunate, yeah. both from a choice from the uh, from the AI and the miss. Actually, chat brings up a good point. Is that going to count against Spider's pump accuracy? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I would assume not, but, uh, yeah, I don't know if, uh, the stats, the statisticians are tracking all hydro pumps <laughs> throughout the run. I imagine if you had to check for every single hydro pump, you'd have, it wouldn't even be that bad. You'd only have to check, like, one or two more fights to see if they even happened. But then again, you know, I am not one of the tournament stat keepers, so, you know, don't listen to me. Yeah. Compare everyone's uh, hydro pump accuracy to Lance's hydro pump accuracy. <laughs> Actually, uh, the hydro pump miss should count against the Misty Scald Burn misses. Hmm. Uh, Pengi with an accidental black pusher. Uh, this boulder can be a little... Boulder pushing can be a little bit tricky, um, just because you don't know when you're going to accidentally get on your mount, um, and it is a little bit uh, floatier, yeah. harder to have exact movement when you're on the mount. Um, so... It, and also, as we've been talked about, you know, the direction that the game thinks you're facing when you go to talk to something is a little bit up in the air some days. Correct. Pengi also making the Alexis skip look easy. Mm -hmm. Now, chat pointing out that Spider picked up the full restore in the last room of Victory Road, which implies going for the one controller Agatha fight. Yeah, that's what I would suspect. Uh, did Spider set up to plus four or plus six here for Lorelei? Uh, that's a good question. I was looking at Penke's screen, so I'm not <laughs> completely positive. Uh, okay. Uh, it was, in fact, plus six. Okay. So, playing it safe, going for, you know, just the really straightforward fight. Hmm. I think... Let's see. I also don't know what the star's current special attack is at, so... I'm not sure where... Uh, the ranges fall for setting up to plus four. Oh wow, that's a 146 on Pengi's uh, yeah. Star's special attack. All right, uh, Spider getting still rocked. Oh. Yeah, you go ahead. It, it, the Pengi Star is already level 52. Yes, that is true. But also, dang. Yeah. Um, yeah, it looks like uh, Spider did not get Earthquake turn one from the Onyx, so uh, if he had gotten the Earthquake, it might have put him in uh, range of uh, that certain move that some runners get from Hitmonlee. Um, but he'll be unscathed. Yeah. Um, Spider should hit level 53 by Dragonite at this point, which means that we don't have to worry about the plus 6 Dragonite range, because we're already at 1516. I feel like everyone, you know, checks that range and does, you know, it dominates, like, the star portion of the run, wondering what your range on Dragonite's going to be. Mm -hmm. I just, I don't even look it up in my runs. I just go for it and say, if I if I get it, I got it. If I don't get it, 
I wasn't going to get it change my <laughs> strategy anyway. But I guess some people like knowing what odds they're getting into. Yeah, and I know that depending on how you're doing, um, whether or not it, the closer you are to hitting the range versus not hitting the range might determine uh, whether or not you want to go for uh, the traditional two controller or uh, do something else on the lance fight. That's true. You could add in like the rapid ash stomp to hopefully tap it in um, yeah, if you are it, doing the two controller. Exactly. All right, uh, getting a typical glare on Agatha and Crunch. No power of love, so we'll have to full restore. Mm -hmm. Does get the defense drop, but otherwise a fairly typical Agatha fight here. Yeah, it should be, even with the defense drop, totally fine for a gold bet. Um, not in the quick attack range, even at minus one. Oh, yeah. Like, the worst uh, that range gets is 32, which with a 1.5 crit puts it up to 48. You're still outside. Sadly not electing to pump Agatha. Maybe. Yeah. I wonder if that's one of the secret bounties. <laughs> First one to pump that, I guess. <laughs> yeah, like, so the the logic behind using Hydro Pump on Agatha rather than going for Psychic is you save time both on the super effective text box and also on the turnaround that we're seeing where Starby turns around and looks to be praised. Um, but it does, you know, introduce that 80% Hydro Pump accuracy into the fight. And if you don't go a hundred percent on your hydro pumps, uh, I don't even know what Pokemon, what moves Agatha has after like the first two Pokemon. So, boy, boy. Uh, I assume both of the Gengar have Shadow Ball, which would hurt pretty badly. Yeah. Um, and. The Golbat has Crunch, and the Weezing has Thunderbolts, so uh, pretty much everything can hit you super effectively. Mm -hmm. um, but as Spider goes to take on Lance, uh, Pengi is here setting up on Lorelei. Uh, it looks like Spider is going to two controller. And Pengi is setting up to plus six. I guess the plus four Scald range just isn't quite good enough for Pengi. No, wait. Uh, Pengi could have set up to plus four on Lorelei just fine. Maybe doesn't have the ranges in his notes. Possibly, yeah. yeah and then on Spider's side, Starmie is going to... Uh, hit level 53 off this Gyarados, uh, moving out of Dragonite range, making this uh, last fight all that's left. The one after the one they're currently in. So Pengi wrapping up Lorelei just fine, heading on to Bruno, shouldn't have any issues there either.
I did notice that he did take the center heel at um, the front desk to go the Indigo Plateau, so he should be fine on uh, if he wanted to Psychic the Onyx, could have plenty of PP. Mm -hmm. he gets Stealth Rock. Still goes for the Scald, which is fine. Just gets that turnaround, uh, as we mentioned, because he did do some extra candies. He is getting the turnarounds on Bruno. Yeah, which, you know, are, what, 10 seconds of time loss because it's five turnarounds total? Yeah, I was never sure if uh, <laughs> they're actually two seconds each or if people just say that as like, oh, they're like two seconds each. Like, <laughs> no one's actually timed them or not. Um, I mean, I haven't. I'm just re re repeating, you know, all yeah, sorts of misinformation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's 150 special attack. Wild. And expectedly, uh, Spider just taking it safe with uh, the two controller champ fight. So even though he did buy those X uh, special defense, didn't end up needing them, but had the flexibility if he chose to one controller them. Mm -hmm does get the air slash into the Starmie, which is not ideal, but, uh, you know. Workable. Yeah. And Dynam in the chat is saying it is about two seconds per turn around was timing it. Um, okay. So I am glad to have it actually confirmed. Yeah. <laughs> And yeah, uh, Spider has finished stepping up. He's just going for a stomp on Rabidash. Uh, making sure to click Thunderbolt for Slowbro, which is a mistake that, once again, I have not made yet, but I'm sure other people have. Yeah, I've definitely... I haven't made that mistake yet, but I've definitely zoned out and realized at the last second, like, oh, right, right. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Looks like Pengy getting basically the same fight as same Agatha fight as uh, Spider Grat. Rapidash getting another level just for good measure. And, and should be just mashing from here. Yeah. Um everyone betting on the Sub 31030 is uh, about to have to pay up. So I have a feeling Spider will be pretty happy with this time. Uh, this was kind of I believe their uh, last PB before uh, getting the 307 this week was a 30. It was a 310 something. Um, so uh, very solid time, um, as people were mentioning in the chats and we kind of discussed earlier. Should be at the top um, of the lower bracket and putting him in a good position for the next round. Yeah, and as far as race times go. Uh, this is nearly five minutes faster than Spider's Round 1 race, which was a 3.16.09. Nice. So we will hang out for a sec and see if um, Spider decides to join us in the chat. 
as we switch over to Pengi's screen. Where uh, he will also be done shortly, because uh, he is on Lance. Hello. This is a lot closer than... That's awesome. I did not know it was this close. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, were you keeping tabs on the race at all, or just completely focusing on your run? Um, after starting in hideout, I checked like every 15 minutes, but then I didn't check after entering E4, so... Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, well, GG's. It was a very great, solid run. Uh, seemed like you made, you know, Aside from having a not ideal EV nature, uh, you seem to make everything work pretty well. I mean, I've run like six or seven minus attacks at this point. It's <laughs> expected for me. <laughs> uh, yeah, you definitely, knowing from your previous runs, you definitely seem prepared to handle that kind of thing and uh, wasn't too worried about it. Um, and got a decent star. Uh, yeah, also, pretty, pretty solid star, all mm -hmm. things considered. Um, yeah, so how are you feeling about uh, this run and kind of going forward? Um, and you're kind of look ahead to the next round. Um, I thought it was pretty good. Um, Victory Road was weird. Uh, mm -hmm. Like, it wasn't that bad. It was just really weird. Right. <laughs> um, and otherwise, I feel pretty good about that one. Um, my catches were decent. Didn't hit any optionals, which is surprising and good for me how's this star oh that's a good star jeez <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it, it is level 54 here okay uh, did which, an extra candy. You know, yeah it helps but still, things, that is, but that it was a good star. You, you know like those stats were good enough already <laughs> um yeah, but he had uh, he caught Rapid Ash, so had the extra rare candy, and I think just decided to use it. You know? Yeah, sure. Uh, yeah, but I believe you are uh, with that 311 currently at the top of, um, you know, have the top time for the lower brackets. So uh, in a very solid position for the next round. Yeah, looking forward to next round. Um, it's going to be very interesting round three lower. Mm -hmm. uh, as we see Pengi doing the, the bug strats for the champ fight, putting in Beedrill. Just to make sure that that gets knocked out. Whereas the Rapidash, as we saw on Spider's run, is not guaranteed to get knocked out on this fight. <laughs> Yeah, of the uh, other runners who are already in the lower bracket for next round, any particular people you're hoping to face or worried about facing? I mean, so Joker and I have been saying that we're going to bribe Etiquette to give us the rematch. So <laughs> that's where I'm at. All right, all right. That would be fun to see. Mm -hmm. um... Yeah, seeing if uh, what his run would look like uh, against you with actually running a modest star, and then <laughs> you not having the uh, Route Twenty One optional, uh, the the swimmer trainer uh, yeah. would definitely make things tight. A little bit of a grudge match, as it were. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep, that's the hope, at least. Mm -hmm. uh, GG to Pengi. Like yes. This is going to be a very solid time and uh, definitely put him in contention for uh, those uh, the second uh, wild card spot, as it were. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it should be interesting um, because I don't know how much uh other runners have been grinding and we haven't seen many of the lower bracket races yet so uh this could get really interesting if other runners in like those second and third spots are suddenly pulling out uh huge time improvements over last round as well 
Yeah, if I remember, it's like five lower bracket matches in a row. Uh, <laughs> something. So it's going to get really interesting to see how it develops as those uh, those races come in. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's like everyone's scheduled for this coming weekend. <laughs> And that's a wrap on Champ. Yeah. So Pengi's going to drop a super solid 318 plus or minus a few. Solid PB, too. Always nice to see. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'm curious to ask some... Um, how much time he's gotten to run uh, with being NAIC. Uh, that kind of taking up a lot of his time over the past week. I think he said his PB is from yesterday. <laughs> so okay, so... He's at least had some, uh, some play time. And then managed to, you know, if that uh, 321 PB uh, is yesterday's time, this is a, you know, really solid additional three-minute improvement. Yeah, absolutely. And like, you know, at the end of the day, the thing that really makes me excited is even beyond like who wins the tournament or whatever, just seeing so many people out here running this game and watching everyone's time just get decimated. Yeah, seeing such big improvement from everybody has been amazing to see and uh, made for some compelling races and just, uh, yeah, a lot of fun. Yeah, Pengi, if you want to get in here, I see you in chat. <laughs> uh, no pressure, though, of course. Hello. Hey. Hello. How is she? Awesome. Hey, you. Hey, you too. Damn. So, uh, let's talk catch uh, oh, catch just... routing, shall we? I have never seen a catch route so scuffed in my life. <laughs> <laughs> and yet, you know, very early on, I think everyone watching was like, oh my god, this is the single most cracked catch route we have ever seen. I, you... I, yeah, the, I, I just like, my EV was so overleveled. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the Chansey and the Super Size Graveler. Yeah. Very silly. Just such a goofy run. It was really fun. Uh. But yeah, um, how are you feeling uh, with a really solid second place time for the lower bracket? Really good. I just wanted a 320. Um, and for the tournament runs, I decided to like not have splits or look at timers or anything. I just focus on the game. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, after like forgetting to menu all those Pokemon before the Chansey, and then like some of the scuffed stuff that happened, like my rival three, I tried to improvise some stuff because I was like four levels over leveled and it just did not go well. And then I missed like five Hydro Pumps. So I was like, all right, maybe 321, maybe it'll be fine. And then I just tabbed over and saw three, it was like a 318 and I was like, oh. Hey, that's kind of nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, very solid time putting up. Uh, you know, always nice to see uh, an improvement. And uh, I think I saw in chat that your PB was from yesterday. Yes, my PB was from yesterday. I got a two-minute PB yesterday and then a two-minute PB today. So that's kind of cool. <laughs> nice. Hell yeah. Um, and currently, this is the uh, second fastest second place time that we have in the lower bracket, meaning that until someone bops you, you are safe for another round of the tournament. Yeah, and like, we have some amazing runners that like still have to go, so you know, no nothing is nothing is safe and secure, but I, I really just wanted a sub 320 to feel at least like there was a possibility of holding on to it, so I feel pretty good. I feel optimistic, but uh, you know, there's... <laughs> Best of luck to everybody else to because you know at the end of the day we just want people to have fun playing the game and get good times. For sure. What was uh what was your EV nature? Uh neutral. Okay. What was yours? 
Uh, minus attack plus special defense. Actual worst nature in the game. Actual right. worst nature. I have run that nature before. <laughs> yeah, I had bold in my in my round one, so I, I feel that on a on a on a visceral level. But yeah, quirky was all right for me today. My my star me was kind of mid, but then I just caught a rapid ash, so I got an extra level from an extra yeah, handy. Nice. So kind of worked out nicely. I mean, your star might have looked pretty mid early on, but. It was either getting an incredible amount of AVs or... Oh, the... it was. Yeah. It, every like... single time I saw it level up, it got a special attack AV. <laughs> yeah. But by the time you were in victory run, I'm looking at things going, you, you, you know, you could go for the faster strats here. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> oh, it, was, it was pretty nice. Yeah, like, your star was incredible there at the end. Yeah, it was kind of like in my last run, I got a star that was very low CP, and I was a little less familiar with the 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 end game routing. So I I think what ended up happening is that I, everything I was going for was a roll, and I just hit all the rolls. So like everyone was like, "Wow, the star is like so bad." I was watching the chat back afterwards, and I I didn't even notice because it just kept <laughs> killing stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, not bad. Uh, I'm gonna go eat some food, I think. But thanks to the the commentators, and uh, you know, it's been it's been fun again. And uh, yeah, thanks thanks for the race as well. It's uh, hopefully I'll see you guys later in in the next round. Yeah, GG. Yeah, well, thanks no for a great round. Have a good one. Have a good GG's one. Bye. Yeah. Do you have any um, parting thoughts or lasting impressions about your run or about the tournament, Spider? Um, oh, the one thing that was funny about this EV is that it was the same EV as, like, the AVs were almost identical to my EV in the first round. Except really? <laughs> I had the XP, so it actually... Because last round, it was the same thing, where I got a ton of speed AVs. This one had five. Um, mm -hmm. But my XP was bad last round, and so they didn't really matter that it was fast. Um, but this one, my XP was actually pretty decent. So I was outspeeding things, which was really nice. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I didn't um, have to outsped that Cadaver and Moon. Yep, and then I outsped both J and J Arbucks, I believe. Um, so that was handy. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah, pretty clean fights for being a uh, not ideal nature. Yeah, I don't think any of them really went too bad. I mean, I lost probably four turns in the early game, but that's whatever. Yeah, to be expected. Yep. But yeah, otherwise, um, just looking forward to the next round. The uh, as I said, the matchups are going to be really interesting in lower round three. Um, there's a lot of really good runners that have already been knocked down to lower, uh, and so fighting to survive is going to be interesting. Yeah, the fact that like the upper bracket is just straight up getting cut in half is going to be terrifying for next yeah. round. Yep. So, be best of luck and congratulations again on your win. Um, for those of you in chat, uh, we have a wonderful weekend of Let's Go coming up. Starting tomorrow, we have dueling races, one with Razor's Edge versus Jim B versus Big B Rigby, one with myself versus Zimluck two hours later. Saturday, we have Jay Tattles versus... Sheep G versus Drywall, and two other races, and then one more race on Sunday. Do not miss it. They are all going to be as incredible as tonight's was. Yeah, and as you can see, all right here on the same Twitch channel, PSR TV and PSR TV 2. Uh, if you're not following the second channel, make sure you go ahead and do that. And yeah, I am excited to see it, and um, who knows, might do some more commentary so I can get in on this action again. Yeah. yeah, I'm looking forward to uh, watching back the VOD. Uh, I'm sure you guys did great on commentary and looking forward to it. Well, I hope so, too. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, for me, it's like, on the one hand, if I win my race, I get to play another round. On the other hand, if I get knocked out, well, then I've just got more time to hang out here in the booth. It's a win-win. Indeed. Um... But thank you all so, so much for hanging out. 
but we have unfortunately come to the end of our time here tonight. Yeah, well, uh, I had a great time. It was a great race. Thank you, Spider, for putting on a great show. And Leggy, it was great commentating with you. Yep, it was. A, it, it's always a blast to hang out at the booth, and you were a wonderful partner to have here. Well, thank you. Have a good night, everyone. Yeah, have a good night. Yeah, once uh, we'll figure out who we're rating, if we're rating. Um, not sure who's all streaming right now.